But I'll see guys that, that take you guys' advice. And it, sometimes, you know, it ruins their life. What, what would men do if they begged you for advice? Again, I'm not in the business of telling men what to do, you know. But I think you kind of are. Well, what percent of women do you think are marriageable? I think you're skirting the issue. People are not going to return to marriage until you make the institution more fair. Well, what they'll do doesn't is they'll matter, return. It yeah. doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what I say. You guys have been preaching marriage for a decade. Yep. And the rates of marriage have still been going down. Why? Because the cost is too high and the quality of women is too low. How do you fix it? Do you want to get married? We have a lot of controversy around these parts. You'll be shocked to hear sometimes people don't like us, they criticize us. And yet, we have found someone who I think is even more controversial and subject even to more criticism than we are in this building. That would be my <laughs> guest today, Pearl Davis. Thank you for having me. Pearl, thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk about the thing that you get in all sorts of trouble for, which is marriage and your, uh, prescriptions for men and women and your observations mm -hmm. of modern life. First, though, I have to ask, you, first of all, are like 12 years old. You're quite young. A lady never tells, but you're quite young. You burst <laughs> well, onto the scene. Yeah. You, I, I think at the, if you're not the most controversial person on the internet, you're probably the most controversial person on Twitter. Okay, yeah. X <laughs> Twitter <now>. is funny. <laughs> How did that happen? Hmm. Gosh, it just, it happened so fast. <laughs> well, it all started... I moved to London to play volleyball. And essentially what happened was I started reacting to red pill content. Okay. And I didn't understand why men were complaining about dating. You know, I kept hearing like men complaining and complaining about dating. So I ended up doing a panel show where I interviewed a thousand women about dating and relationships. Um, and I actually, I, I came to the point where I could see where the guys were coming from. Hmm. I had a second question, too. I wanted to know, why don't men want to get married anymore? You know, I grew up in a two-parent home. My parents have been married for 30 years. I didn't understand it. Um, and I came to find out that when men have children in this country, you know— In the, this country, meaning the U.S. In the think. United States, you know, they're not legally entitled to their children. And I think it's the biggest issue that we're facing right now. Single-mother homes, they lead to school shooters— they're, you're more likely to commit crimes, drug deal. Every problem in society comes from single mother homes. And so, you know, what I found is that men are not getting married, not because they don't want relationships, but because they fear divorce. Hmm. And divorce rates, I guess it's not that divorce rates are skyrocketing, in part because fewer people are getting married now. Mm -hmm. but, but you observed that divorce is... One, could, one could say is at the very heart of the political problem because mm -hmm. marriage, the family, is the fundamental political unit. Mm -hmm. So you crack that up, you're going to crack up society. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I have a documentary coming out called Why Don't Men Want to Get Married Anymore? Where it really dives into mm -hmm. the problems as to why the institution of marriage is failing. So. Okay. So that, that answers why men are reluctant to get married now. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do about it? I think the first thing you need to do is switch the laws to make them more favorable and fair. So, for example, the tender years doctrine, do you know what that is? The tender years, no. That assumes that the mother is the best one for the child under the age of seven. In some states, it extends to 16. Yeah. yeah. That's an openly sexist law. That's openly sexist. But what do you mean by and, sexist? Because, you know, sometimes people say sexist and I, mm -hmm. you know— if they're referring to real misogyny or something, mm -hmm. I don't like that. But if they're saying men and women are different, I, I certainly well, they are. They are. They are. They are different, right? Yeah. But what evidence do we have that the mother is the best one with the children? Well, the kids uh, are the most likely to be abused by the mother, not the father, by the mother. That's a little. And, it's and a little unclear. What that's a little unclear because, mm -hmm. uh, for starters, you know, mm -hmm. as you just acknowledged the children are much more likely to be with the mother, not only in the case of divorce, but also in the case of a married but couple why? daddies at work. But why? Why so are the kids way the, more likely the way to the be laws, with mothers? The way the laws are set up, it punishes men for being traditional. If you're a traditional— no, no, when, yeah. when I say kids are more likely to be with their mothers, I just mean because even in a traditional family, right. I, daddy, am off at work right now, and mommy is home with the kids. But—so so what's your point with that? My point is that 
if, and the statistics are a little unclear about this. There was a, a number from HHS in 2009 mm -hmm. showed that women are much more likely to abuse or neglect their children. Mm -hmm. There's another number from last year from, I think it was the National Child Abuse and Neglect mm -hmm. Data Set or something like that, uh, which found that it's a little closer to equal. Women still have a slight edge on abuse, but it's, it's close to sexual but parity. But then when you not, factor in... Not the biological dad. That includes stepdads. Not that, the biological father. That, that, no, that's biological father. No, it's... For, it's it is. The 20, the, uh, I'm, okay. I, I, which data set are you referring to? Well, they've done comprehensive studies over the last hundred years. But uh, and, who, and so, what, what do you mean by they? Like, I'm referring to a very specific okay, data set. Okay, go ahead. So in, in, in that very specific data mm -hmm. set, that would contradict the 2009 numbers mm -hmm. from HHS. But nevertheless, it would mm -hmm. still prove your point, which is that the women are slightly more likely. But then I guess my point is, mm -hmm. right, the women in marriage and outside of marriage mm -hmm. are much more likely to be with children all of the time. Right, so but then, but then the you, would, you would see surprising. the abuse numbers go down as women have spent less time with children. So in the last 50 years, women have worked more. You're, hold on, you're they, saying that children so, so are more, more likely to be abused more in, a, in a traditional family with mother and father, or you're saying single I'm saying father and single mother? women are the most likely the ones to abuse the child. And even if you include, you think abortion's murder, right? Yeah. So I, <laughs> one out of three women's had an abortion. I've seen some seen, numbers I've that seen, say one, or, one out of four, but, yeah. but the point is still the same. If one out of four men committed murder, <laughs> we would sure. all be... Sure, though, yeah, I mean, ab so, abortion is murder, but also, you know... Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into that because there are And so the I just couldn't. Can, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you know, when, when we point to, to an issue like abortion, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, yeah, that's a, uh, that is murder. It's not only morally synonymous, it's, it's the same thing. But, but then also, you know, the male abortionists are involved in the murder, the male legislators who pass If the I laws. hire a hitman, I'm still responsible. Sure, but so is the hitman. He goes to jail too. Right, but there's far more women that are hiring a hitman than men performing the act. Well, so I guess in every in point. every abortion, it's a woman who's procuring one. Exactly, right. that's yeah, my yeah. point. And so my point is that law is openly sexist. It's sexist, but men and women are different. So shouldn't it shouldn't it be sexist? Meaning, when a little baby mm -hmm. <laughs> calls out, mm -hmm. a little baby is calling out for mm -hmm. mommy, not daddy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying this is good. I, I think divorce is unacceptable in pretty mm -hmm. much every circumstance, mm -hmm. but. If there is going to be a divorce, uh, it, it would seem natural for a little baby to be with the mother rather well, than the father. Even if you look at infanticide, it's almost unheard of for men to ever commit it. It's almost 100% the mother. Well, that's, that's, and that's, and that's my point. That, that's is contradicted my point by is, one study. I don't, from, I don't, I don't think it's, it's right that men are not entitled to their children. It's 50% their DNA. It's 50% their child. Why are they not entitled to 50% custody? And, and they if you should look be entitled at, to 100% custody within the context of marriage, which is indissoluble. Right. But, but to the point you just made where you mm -hmm. said uh, fathers don't kill their kids, mm -hmm. again, I, I think statistics are basically fake, but if people are going <laughs> to cite them, I'm, a, right. I'm happy to cite right. them when they buttress my argument. And there was a study that came out in 2017, mm -hmm. I think, from Forensic International Science, something like mm -hmm. that, uh, which showed that 57% of the time in cases of killing offspring, it's the fathers who do it, mm -hmm. not the mothers. Now, again, I'm sure that one can pull well, some other statistics. Right, to and the then other you can side. go into the abortion stats, too. And obviously my, abortion. My, my whole point is that I think that men should be entitled to their children. I don't think it's fair the way the system is. You know, regardless of where you fall, it's not fair that women get custody 90% of the time. It's not fair that men are always paying alimony, they're always paying child support, and that they are punished for being traditional. Because the more time they spend providing for their family, the way they calculate it in, in child support is they, they kind of do a, you know, a, I gotcha. You know, you did the right thing. You provided for your family. Why are you punished in child, in child custody cases? Well, you didn't do the right thing if you got divorced. Right, but it's filed by women seventy to eighty percent of the time. It goes and even higher, actually. and that's it goes even higher. So if women are you know college educated, if women are college yeah, educated, yeah, but, but I guess this but is the, the whole, but this is the key point. To me, this is the key because you know the liberals love to say, see, college educated women they they favor liberal policies, which is right. true, but yeah. uh, but I don't think that college education signifies a you know particularly strong education. Okay. To me, it's a it's clearly a sign of liberalism. So then, you know, I don't mean to blame the victim here if I'm talking about the men, but it would seem to me if you don't want to get divorced, not marrying a liberal woman is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. if, the liberal, if the more liberal women are, the more likely they are to divorce. It's almost like a truism, right? It's like saying <laughs> the more likely a woman is to support divorce, the more likely is she is to divorce. Mm -hmm. Well, then why would a man marry a woman who would support divorce?
What, well, what percent of women do you think are marriageable? What do you mean by marriageable? Not, no tattoos, no debt, not overweight, um, do, doesn't openly hate men. It, it's not the majority, Michael. What's the number? <laughs> they, these are confirmed by an actuary. It's less than 5%. Which actuary? Not, like, <laughs> what, what, what study is it? It's called, it's a world without men. It's, it's, it's a study or it's a blog or a book or what is a world it's a without book. men? It's a book. And they go through the numbers that are confirmed so, by an actuary. So I saw that and, book. I saw and, that and book. You, but you know this, Michael, even in real life. You go on the whatever podcast. Yeah, yeah. You go, I mean, you see Fresh and Fit Miami. It's, it's yeah, not yeah. like, and I've interviewed a thousand women. A thousand. Yeah, yeah. I've interviewed Christian women. I've but, you know, the thing Catholic is, women. So I saw that. And I've, and I've interviewed, I've been on the other side of divorce. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen men that did exact. they did yeah, yeah. the right thing. But I'm skeptical of your number here because, okay. look, I'm not, look, it's, okay. a, it's a crazy world. The women have crazy colored hair. They have tattoos. They right. do crazy stuff. But I saw that book. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, maybe you had mentioned it or someone on the internet mentioned it. And I didn't know, was it a study? Is it a this or is it a that? And it's this book by a blogger who does not really. No, say, he's an economist. So I read the book. I, I hate okay. to be, um, I would encourage people to take a look at the book. Okay. There, I, I open up the book. The first sentence of that book, there is one mistaken quotation and three mm-hmm. grammatical errors in the first mm-hmm. sentence. And then I looked for the 5% number. Mm-hmm. The, fi- the 5% figure appears nowhere in the book. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, I'm not saying that uh, the world is teeming with women who are traditional and, right. you know. Would you, know. would you agree it's the minority? Who are the marriageable? Minor- the, yeah, the minority. Even if we look no, at just overweight. I don't. 70% of women. Sometimes I think you guys are so out of touch. I don't think like, it's a disqualifier. 70%. You want a fat wife? <laughs> it's like, come on. No, guys. I, I, this I, is I, what I, you're I, telling I, men to sign up for. Why? Well, what I'm telling and men so, is, I guess what I'm and telling that's, men. And that's my point. It's not the majority. And when is the last time you dated? Like 10 years? You've been a married for a while. Ago. So, uh, yeah, so sometimes you talk and I just think you're a bit out of touch with you're the current saying I'm, dating Okay, market. no, that's fair. You're saying you know, I'm, I, could I never say swiped, this, I never did any of these correct. things. Correct, and I'm saying, I'm yeah. saying I, I've interviewed a thousand women. I could give yeah. you examples in real life too. I mean, a th- that's a ton of people, Michael. Sure, so, <laughs> sure. There, I, I, I have no doubt that yeah. the dating pool is difficult now. But is and, that... And the, is problem, that and, the, and the problem is that the state is the legal enforcement arm. Well, that's, all, for, that's by definition. That's co- correct. So there is no way for a man to get married in 2024 without being entered into the state contract. But that's always and so And so I, I understand, but I understand men's hesitation when the quality of women has gone down. But what if, I, I, don't tell men, I don't tell men not to get married or like what to do. I think every man has to decide for themselves. But I, I don't think you're going to win a lot of support or I, I think you have to understand the problem in order to come up with a solution. But so you are telling men at the very least, you're right. observing that it is not advisable today in 2024 to get married. I would say that every man has to pick for himself. Okay. But I think objectively, if me and you sign a contract and one of us is paid to leave, you would never sign that business deal. You would I never sign, sign it. I did, right. If you're, if you're saying that's the state of marriage now, I did get married, therefore mm-hmm. I did sign it. Okay, well, congratulations, but I think a lot a lot of men are going to be hesitant to do that. And, and you're saying it's, yeah. it's rational for them to be hesitant? Yeah. So you're saying it's advisable? No, not, not advisable. But every, rational. Every man, like, okay, I'll, what's, give you what's the I'll give you an example. You, I'm not here, I think men have had enough of women telling them what to do. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not telling men to do anything, but I think your situation is going to be completely different than the average Joe making $45,000 a year. If your marriage goes south, uh, you have the money to afford lawyers. I have the money, but <laughs> I'm going to lose money, half money. The, what? It, it, one of the... N- but but you, do you think you're in the same position as the average man making $45,000 a year? The answer is no. no but I the don't, answer is no. I don't think it's because of my money, though. I, you know what I think it's, because well, look, when I got married, I didn't have a lot of money, mm-hmm. but now I have more money. No. But I, I think there's a bigger distinction here, okay. which is I am of a religious view and practice mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. does not recognize the reality of divorce. Mm-hmm. Not only do we discourage it, not only, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm a mackerel snapping papist, okay. a member of the Catholic faith. I'm Catholic too. We, you're Catholic also. I'm also Catholic. So, oh, marvelous news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We do and not. Catholics are not immune to divorce. I have seen it. 
I've seen I've seen people getting yeah. married for the second time. They still get communion, and the number of annulments is well, going that's, up. That's not licit. The number it's, it's it's but that's they a do. Grave but that's the no. But I, I know. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because it happens all the time. But you can and you so know, that's no, like saying, it, no, it's, it's like totally. Saying, you know, it's, I see someone who calls we, we have a record. We have a record number of annulments this year in the Catholic Church. You cannot. The Catholic Church is getting more. Li- you you see the Pope, and I think we could agree the, on this the, stuff. The Pope, the Pope for uh, you know all of the um, liberal uh, mm-hmm. statements that have appeared in the press under his name. The, the Pope is generally pretty good on matters of sex and marriage. Uh, he's pretty clear. Um, mm-hmm. When you say, you know, Catholics get divorced, it has happened. There's well, a distinction it's, it's, between an it's, annulment. It's around, I, I looked it up before this, it's around 25, 35. So that's how, yeah. It's, it's, that's it's around, yeah, it's around 35%. And so, so, that, so that's not a small average, percentage. What's the national average? Like 45% roughly? Mm-hmm. So Well, I, I 2024 it was 50. Okay, so, f- so I, I know everyone splits that. hairs over like the 5, 10%, but well, regardless, like 50, it's then. not small. So what, it, what that means then mm-hmm. is that if you're, if you're a man, and I totally grant that it, dating pool's tough and mm-hmm. the economy's tough and okay. the, the divorce courts are terrible and divorce laws are terrible. I but they should that. sign up anyway. Well, yeah, no, before we even get to that, <laughs> okay. before we get to that, one way to mitigate one's risk in marriage mm-hmm. of divorce would be to be just any old Catholic, right? Because you then reduce the likelihood of divorce by 16% immediately. Okay. 16 percentage points, much mm-hmm. more than 16% from the 50% number. So then, what if uh, you're a uh, Muslim. Okay. Divorce rates among Muslims, even a little lower, 30%. Okay. Divorce rates among Orthodox Jews, mm-hmm. 30, as low, there's a lot of different kinds of Jews, but it goes down to as low as 10. Mm-hmm. And then you get down to a little more of the old school Catholics, which is kind of uh, yeah. how I practice. Mm-hmm. There aren't great La- numbers like, on it. Do you go to Latin mass? Traditional Latin mass, okay. the yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, That's those, a lot of patience. It's a, <laughs> yeah, but that's, frankly, that's I find it, it. No, it's good. It's good. Latin mass is a little better. It seems it like is, it goes it is, faster yeah. than the shorter. No, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a little bit better in the Latin mass. I'd agree. But you know, in when it comes to divorce, mm-hmm. the numbers are a little sparse here. Mm-hmm. It's like five to, to maybe ten percent. Mm-hmm. But the problem low. the problem is with most of those stats. One, it, there most of those studies were done before social media. Anyone that dated before and after social media knows it completely changed the game. It, how, how do you mean? Well, women now have access to men anywhere. And, and cheating mm. and cr- goes up. Like, mm. dating, you know, the number one way people are meeting under 30 is dating apps. No. You, you know, I mean, this is a completely different dating marketplace than when you were dating. Though I guess— And that's, and that's my point. When is, I was dating— there is, no, there is no Catholic woman in divorce court. <laughs> women will throw out their religion very, very fast when they want to leave. You cannot pray a woman that wants to leave you into not leaving you. I think you uh, don't. Don't the statistics I just cited show that you can? The no, but the rates problem are so much with lower. those is they include women over a certain age. The women under the age of thirty-five You're saying have been different. on. So, yes, it's yeah. completely different. Yeah, I don't know. And I, mean, I think you can't really deny it with what you've seen. You go on whatever podcast. Are those the same women of our grandmothers and great grandmothers? No, it's completely different. There's not a ton of Orthodox Jews and traditional Catholics on that mm-hmm. podcast, but I, I you know, and perhaps and there's if, a reason for that. And if and you know, you got to ask like the reputation. What's the reputation of, of Catholic? girls. <laughs> well, what do you mean? I mean, again. Th- that's, that's my point. My, my point is they have, the, if, if there was an abundance of wives in church, Michael, the men would be lining up to go. But they, and men, they do. Men the traditional leaving, church. Men are leaving the church. Under, under the age of 35, young men, you know, church partace, participation is going down altogether, but young men are leaving the church. Well, what about the traditional parishes? The, the traditional parishes— They're exploding, and it's all young people. I mean, the median age is like 22 in these parishes, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's largely young men. So I, gr- I totally right. grant you that a lot of modern religion has become quite effeminate mm-hmm. and has driven men away. Right, but I'm saying we- the church, the Catholic church is not exempt. It's absolutely not exempt. I, I've seen a lot of the same trends in the Catholic church. I, I, I guess my, you know, confusion, so. my confusion is, though— you, you bring up these statistics, and so then we acknowledge the statistics that right. show that if one uh, you know, gets married, assuming that divorce is not a sacramental reality, that the likelihood of divorce goes mm-hmm. way down. But then when we say that, you instantly say, well, the, actually now the statistics aren't worth anything because young people are different. Wait, say that again? Sorry. So <laughs> Wait. we agree yeah. that uh, the numbers for right. Catholics, Jews, Muslims, mm-hmm. Orthodox Jews and Muslims, mm-hmm 
divorce numbers are way lower. Mm-hmm. And you acknowledge those statistics, but then you say, no, but I no, don't. St- no, I don't. You don't. Okay. All right. No, no, because most of those include women over a certain age. Right. You're that's, saying the young people, it's, a it's different totally different. time, Michael. So what is, and that's, that's the same thing. Like the time my parents got married in is completely different. So than what changed today. other than now they have app, so they meet on apps rather than at bars. And that's the big change. That's why we can't believe the statistics anymore. Well, the average marriage is seven years now, Michael. Right. But we've had divorce, uh, expanded divorce for a long time. We've had uh, no-fault divorce in America since 1969. So, you know, I acknowledge these are, by historical standards, relatively novel, but we're still talking like 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. More than 50 years. I, I don't, you know, I just think a lot of times I hear you guys' advice to go to church and find find a good woman. And I, I don't necessarily think it's bad advice in general. But again, I, I think that times have changed. And I think a, a lot of times you guys are a bit out of touch with what the average man is going through in this country. Well, what do you mean by the average man, I guess? Men come yeah. in all shapes and sizes. So, you know, acknowledging the fears of the modern Do you, do you think men have valid fears? In getting married, do you think any of it's valid, or do you think they're making it up? Yeah, I think that marriage entails risk. Okay, course. okay. But there are ways so, to mitigate risk. Th- there are and it's ways, a natural correct, institution. Correct. Correct. There are there are ways to involved. mitigate risk. Yeah. But like, because I don't know when you talk about this stuff, it, you guys are just. <laughs> not, sorry, I don't mean to say you guys, but please. But some, Re- generalize. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. But sometimes I'm just like, how do you not see where the men are coming from? You know, I've talked to men that did the exact same thing. That they, they they took you guys' advice to a T. What's our advice? I, our advice is okay, just to, uh, to marry. I, I've seen married. a lot of stuff from the Daily Wire. Yeah. Okay. It might be you. Might be other guys that say get married young, right? Yeah, it's good. To sign up. <laughs> okay. But I'll see guys that that take you guys' advice, and it sometimes you know it ruins their life. Because they get divorced. It, no. Yeah, and and the divorce isn't like the woman ruins their reputation. Mm-hmm. You know, calls him an abuse. You know, and even you know. Yeah, yeah you know, calls him an abuser, says all these awful things. You know, he hasn't seen his kids in two years. It's awful, yeah. And, and it's, it, it's the saddest thing when you see a man that's going through a divorce. So what's the alternative, and, though? Because I totally agree okay, with you about okay. the risk and the pitfalls of modern marriage. Well, I, I think that the laws need to change first. Because regardless of what I say— Before people get regardless, married? Well, it's not about what I say. It's about what people will do. You guys have been preaching marriage for a decade. Men aren't signing up. No, men are, the, men the still rate get of, no, no, but the rate of getting married is going lower. Right, but we less also, we also men are getting married. We redefined and, marriage and at the federal cor- levels. Correct, for, you know, I mean, correct, we've also correct. had divorced for 50 years. Yeah, so yeah, again, cor- you know. cor- correct. No, you're right. You're correct. But I'm saying laws need to change. Personally, if it was it was Pearl's world, <laughs> yes. and I, I think you're probably going to have to find somewhere that meets in the middle for something to pass. But if it was Pearl's world, I wouldn't have alimony. I wouldn't have child support. I don't think you're entitled to it. Yeah, I, I, would, I don't. I would certainly eliminate no fault divorce, and I would I would greatly restrict divorce broadly. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I think until you do that, you're going to have a hard time getting men to sign up. You know, until women get in shape. Sure. <laughs> you know, if seventy percent of women are overweight, that's not a great sell to men. But okay, so yeah, you, you know, eighty percent of women gain twenty pounds in the first five years of marriage. Sure. You know? Yeah, that's no good. They you should know, stay that's, fit. That's, you nice. should stay fit. Well, right? no, they should gain you know, a lot of weight it, to have children. <laughs> They should gain so much weight because they're having children. But this is my point. You know, you're not going to appeal to men by shaming them into marriage. I'm not shaming anyone. I'm just, I'm just recommending. But I've heard you guys say things like you're not like a real man if you don't get married. I've heard this from no, the trad comedy. That's not not exactly true because some men are called to religious life. Some men are called to celibacy. Right. But the ones who are not are called to marriage. Not, not merely uh, because it's sort of fun. Though it's fun, but uh, because it's a natural institution. Because. Men have certain ends. We have mm-hmm. certain goals, right? Mm-hmm. So one of them would be we want to have children. This is not just a preference, you know, de gustibus non disputandum est. This is a, an aspect of the natural but law. Don't, don't you think they should follow their purpose in God first? That is part of their purpose. Okay. No, I don't think so. That's, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think men's purpose is women. I think men's no, it, purpose having is, children, sir, is, is well, why? Why well, is that their purpose? If even the Apostle Paul said it's better to be alone, or not not the Apostle Paul, but but it's Apostle even Paul in the, was celibate, yeah. But but well, to, to mention <laughs> sorry, the, I'm getting, no, no, the Apostle Paul was celibate. You know, uh, yeah. but but you, since you mentioned Christianity, mm-hmm. it's, right? It's important to remember our Lord 
is the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. The church is the bride. So uh, from the Christian perspective, marriage is understood to be a symbol of Christ's love for his church. Mm -hmm. Now, there, that's the supernatural But that's not how it's practiced today. Yeah, in some, and some quarters point. it is. But, but you, can, you can say my special religion, here's the exception. It's not across no, the board. No, my true religion okay, that, okay. that well, built yeah. our entire civilization. That's what I'm okay, talking about. Okay. It's not, I'm some, a, I'm a not Catholic some eccentric. Too. I'm a Catholic too. But well, I'm just describing not, to you the Catholic view of marriage, yeah. which is different than the view you're But it's not, it's not the way that Catholics are doing it if we have 25% getting divorced. That's not a small number. Well, it's not and the way that twenty five percent are doing it. It's it's or thirty. It's really thirty five. Yeah, yeah. But I, I try to be I try to be conservative because I don't want to go back and forth. You know. But but to the but, to, to that point, Pearl. You know, yeah. uh, Joe Biden calls himself a practicing Catholic. He supports killing infants in the womb up until the moment of birth as a matter of law. So you know. But we get into a yeah. tricky territory when you get to play God and decide who's a Catholic I'm not, and who's not. I'm not God. playing God, and I don't decide the magisterium. Okay. But, okay. But the. The deposit of faith does, the mm -hmm. magisterium does, sacred scripture does, the vicar of Christ does, mm -hmm. and on this point, all are clear. And I'm, by the way, I'm not even talking about marriage necessarily from a supernatural perspective, though I certainly view it that way. Mm -hmm. But there's also the natural perspective, which is that there, there is, you say men should follow their purpose and should follow God. I, of course, agree. So how do we know our purpose? Men have what? We have the scriptures, we have revelation, but we also have our conscience and reason. And so there's something called the natural law. Mm -hmm. And the natural law inclines us toward marriage. Men and women are, by our very nature, inclined toward marriage. Mm -hmm. You would disagree? No. You wouldn't yeah, well, disagree? Well, so there you go. No, there you no, no. It. Well, sort of, sort of. I, I think men... Sorry. I think that in the current market, there are just not enough wives to go around. There, there are not enough wives to go, women that deserve to be wives, hmm. in, in my opinion. Okay? Sure. You, you'd agree on that, right? Well, I don't, like, so, so I don't know example, exactly what you for, mean by that. I, uh, maybe I would agree, but okay. I don't know exactly what you mean by it. <laughs> okay. Um, do you think men should have standards? Yes. Do you think it, it's, it's okay for them to want a woman that's in shape? Do you think that's an okay standard? Good. Yeah, it's good. Okay, a, a girl that's religious. That's would you say that's good? That's good, okay. But that's, not, but that's not the majority. That's but, not the majority. So what are men supposed to do in the meantime? They're supposed to convince the women to get in shape and get religious. Good luck. I've done it for a year. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you haven't That's had, the, but maybe the men would be more persuasive than you would to these women. <laughs> Good luck. I don't know. I, I, I've, I, Did I, the OnlyFans models quit that you interviewed? <laughs> I don't know if that, you know, I've only interviewed on. a few on whatever. <laughs> no, that's the shows. That's the point. There's, there's actually, there, I mean, miracles happen, but I wouldn't bet on it. There, there are a couple gals, there are a couple of gals who've written into my show, not from the whatever podcast, yeah. but who were watching my show mm -hmm. and, you know, really watching in the member block mm -hmm. and everything, who were both uh, like online pornographers to some degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, one said she was going to quit. I kind of lost track of her in the show. Another one mm -hmm. quit, had a major conversion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what a, what a wonderful oh, that evidence one? of the glory was of God. Was it the one on Twitter? Yes. Yeah, her OF link was still up. So a lot of times... <laughs> she denied this. Someone no, said that her, that was true. Her, I, I, her I didn't OF see link was still up. Yes, it was. I, I checked did, it. I didn't yes, see it. Yes, it was. I, I'm she, positive. She she posted it and showed that it wasn't it was, still up. It was, it was I don't still know. up. But okay. I don't know. She seemed pretty but, sincere but to my, me. But in any case, are you denying the principle that uh, people can change? Yeah, I mean, God can forgive you, but men don't have to. I'm I don't, not I don't think it's. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about say, repentance. I wouldn't. Repentance is good, but I wouldn't say that makes her wife worthy if you still used to have an OF account. You, you would agree that men in general yeah. should not date women that had OnlyFans accounts. It's not ideal. But okay, it's, I don't you, think it's you can't definitively. You can't definitively so. say that a woman. Okay. I don't think it's disqualified. I mean, it, well, because, I just uh, I think you're going to have a tough time selling guys on that. I'm not convinced of it. I mean, you know, uh, to quote St. John Vianney, the saints didn't all start well, but they all ended well. So I, I wouldn't recommend that I, people uh, get involved in porn in any way. Okay. But uh, there's also, you know, on the men's side of things, men are in little rough shape because of our modern culture too. Mm -hmm. A lot are addicted to porn. A lot have hooked up with a lot of people. A lot of kind of indulged perversions and things like that. Mm -hmm. doesn't make them particularly marriageable either. But it why, is it, why is it whenever we say something about the women, we have to say but men? Well, be, because it's an observable fact, and marriage involves men and women. I know, but I'm, all, I said, all I'm saying, you know, Michael, all I'm saying yeah. is don't date. Like, it's just crazy sometimes. I just, I, I get so curious because I say yeah. men shouldn't date women that used to have OnlyFans. Like, that, that yeah. shouldn't even be an argument. That uh, yeah, should I don't be know. Like a... I, I don't know. I mean, again, it's not Would ideal you, to have You a... wouldn't date a woman with an OnlyFans. Well, I wouldn't date any woman now because I'm happily married. <laughs> no, but, but, but if you were single, right, you wouldn't do that. It would, it would be 
<laughs> an obstacle. It would be an obstacle. It would be such a big obstacle. It would you be an obstacle. Do it. But yeah. that's that's the problem. I like I interview guys that are dating a girl for six months, they find out she used to have an OnlyFans account. These are real things that happen. Sure. Yeah. It's look. It's you not know? ideal, though. Frankly, I, I'm again yeah. to your point. I've been out of dating for a long time, but but uh, these days, can one find a girlfriend? I mean, I assume it can happen, but in modern kind of liberal secular dating, mm-hmm. can one find a girlfriend who's never texted a naked picture of herself? I don't know. Don't like <laughs> women do this all the time now, and then it becomes a big scandal when they get. Yeah. Like, and so those do those women deserve to be wives? I don't, don't know that they, that, I don't know that we deserve much that's, of anything. That's my, that's but, my, but that's but my point. But ought we to do it is my That's question. my point is, is the women of today are not the women of yesterday. And sure. it's becoming more and more difficult to find the women that you're talking about. And there are not enough to go around. But you're framing. That's my point. Sure. But you're framing this as a question of who deserves to be married. But my framing of it is what one ought to do. That marriage but is a natural uh, end of our nature. I don't, I don't deal in oughts. I deal with what is. Not but, what but, I want. But, the, not but what the, I want. The, the, not what I want the world to. But be. the is of our nature implies an ought in our actions. But but it's not. It's not about ought. what we want it to be, Michael. It's about what the world. No, is I'm just now. saying how people ought to behave. <laughs> what they and they ought to get married is what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I, which is implied by our nature, which is the is. Okay. Right. Because at the very least, bro, you would say people want to have kids, right? I mean, if women wanted to have kids so bad, why are they killing them like crazy? You know, yeah, there's a lot of abortion. It's <laughs> yep. dreadful. But I'm just saying people yeah. in general, you would admit, want to have kids. Sometimes. Sometimes they do and they don't. I mean, women, women aren't having kids like they used to. I talk to women all the time that say they don't want to have kids. People, yeah, they say yeah. it. It's so, unfortunate. But that's, and people that's say what, a lot of those things. And that's where it's going. But I guess— I mean, But half of women are going to be single and childless by 2030. What that's about these the way men? the world's but going. The men you're talking about, the men want to have kids, right? Or no, they, they're also degenerates. They all, everyone's just a degenerate now. Men want, men want marriage relationships and families. Men want that in general. Okay. But there are obstacles now that make it increasingly difficult for men to do that. One is that, one is that, one is that. Yeah, yeah, it's really common. So you would it's sacrifice really, having one is, children? One is, one, is, one is that the women are increasingly lower quality. They've gained weight. <laughs> the, the the body count numbers are up. Buy them a stairmaster. Okay. I don't you know. Like get them a. Gym. Oh, good luck. You know, I tried to pay a girl to lose weight. I swear to God, I did because she came on my show. No, I swear. Yeah. I swear. And I said, I said, because she was really fat, and I told her to. And I was like, I'll pay for your training. And I gave, I said, I'll give you a cash prize. I said, I'll give you three thousand dollars if you lose weight. That's a ton of money. Yeah. She couldn't do it. She couldn't stick to it for, for a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I get the offer? <laughs> well, you, you you look like you're in shape. Stop it. Come on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's that's my point. You know, one obstacle is that the, the women are lower quality. Okay. The benefits are not the same. Most women are not raised to be traditional wives and mothers. And the cost is getting higher. So, you know, it's becoming, divorces are getting more expensive. Weddings are getting more expensive. So when you combine yeah. those, yeah. They don't need to be, but no, they, I, they are often. I agree, reality. but it's not about what I want the world to be. No, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, 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 I'm Catholic too. And I think there's awesome things about the Catholic church. But. That's a big but. but, but, <laughs> it's but it's never good to no, say no, I'm a part no, of this religion, but. No, but it, it doesn't mean everyone's following it. It doesn't mean that's the norm. And I'm talking about what the world is. Not what I want it to be. No, but it's not, it's not just what I'm, you want it to be. I'm, I'm saying, like, if, I, if I'm a young man mm-hmm. and I'm acknowledging a lot of the things you're saying, yeah. that's a tough, tough dating out there. Mm-hmm. But look, I want to have kids. I want to have a family. Mm-hmm. Are you, I know you say you don't want to give no, men say, advice. I say every man, you have to decide for yourself. But let's say the man came to you and said, Pearl, I know what you, but I don't <laughs> care do what you want. I demand. These, 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 these um, hypothetical situations. Well, well, we're just discussing a concept in the abstract, and fine, and fine. so and and t- I, I think you're kind of sneaking around giving advice because I think you're saying, look, through my reason, I've arrived at this conclusion about what's rational and advisable, mm-hmm. but I'm not giving advice. So let's get through all that. Let's say the man comes to you, says, "Pearl, <laughs> tell, give me the are advice." We, Should I get we, married? Are we reporters or preachers? I'm, I'm, I'm just a <laughs> but writer. But that's and but that's, a that's talker. my that's my <laughs> but that's my point. Yeah. Is I, I'm. I'm, but you're, okay, I'm I'll give you an example. Mistake. I'll give you an example. Yeah. Your options are going to be completely different than another guy's options. Why? Every <laughs> Because I'm devilishly handsome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. De- a, devilishly <laughs> handsome, you know. Where That's not the case for every man. Every man has to decide for himself. Do you, okay, do you think men should be extremely cautious with, when getting married? 
I think they ought to be extremely prudent when getting married. I don't Not know. cautious. I think courage is a, uh, you know, a, a virtue and the prerequisite for all the other virtues. So I don't mm-hmm. think men should be little wallflowers backing away from a challenge. But they ought to be prudent. They ought to use their judgment properly. And so there are ways to mitigate risks within marriage. But furthermore, they, they ought to get married because that is the, the way to achieve if, the very thing if, you're suggesting no, they ought to, which no is their purpose. What if no women want to get married? Well, they do want to get married. <laughs> no, they don't. I mean, w- <laughs> because women, when women have the most choice, we don't choose marriage. Women have the most choice when it t- comes to commitment around the age of 22. They're not choosing to get married. I don't pay attention oh, to what oh. people say. <laughs> no, I no, pay you mean, you, you mean when, they, when they have the most options, when they're the most marriageable. But yeah, they, they do, but correct. you will acknowledge those women who have been duped by feminism. Maybe even after they're past their no, prime I, marriageable age. No, they come to I, I, don't, I don't blame it on feminism. I look at it different. I know women that have been raised in this culture that chose to get married at 22, wait, like waited till me. Like did, I, I know women yeah. that did the whole, like exactly what you're describing. So it was based on the choice. Every woman has choice. Every and they woman got married. has agency. And they got married. Yes, but there's also women that chose to go on OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's why yeah. I'm saying you I'm just can't saying, blame I think, your, I think you those women tend to regret dis- it. But I'm saying, like, I, I don't like blaming your decisions on society because y- at the end of the day, you are responsible for the decisions that you make. Right, but but your education is responsible for forming the way that you think about things, No, but there's marriage. people in the same education, and they make different decisions. When I say, I mean education in the broad sense, meaning how people are raised, which gets to the point of marriage. Mm. Like, But I know, I know there's people that... <laughs> That are raised in bad environments and choose not to do that. Everyone has free. You, you. Everyone's got free will, Michael. Sure, but we're also shaped by our social context and our educations. Right, but aren't you? No. Res- you're responsible for the choices you make, right? I am. I'm a moral you are, agent. I certainly. am. Okay. But but I'm I'm uh, more morally free to act the more that I can discipline my lower passions and bring them into accord with my rational will, which is why I'm discussing marriage as a, as a matter of reason. So that, I guess the question you'd have to ask is even before we can say whether or not you want to give advice to men, but, you know, should they or shouldn't they? What is marriage for? Like, what's the point of it? Mm -hmm. So what's the point of marriage? I I think that the point of marriage is, I mean, (laughs) it's to create a union. It's supposed to, you know, it's supposed to be you are submitting to your husband's authority and you're creating a family. And creating a family. Yeah. Yes. So it's forming a union Mm -hmm. with certain roles and, Mm -hmm. you know, a structure and to create a family. And do you you think that's how it's being used today for the average person? For the average person? Yeah, it forms a union. It creates a family. The average marriage is seven years. Yeah, but it's a union. (laughs) I mean, I I think there's more to marriage than you described, but but I think that those are some basics. The average marriage is seven years. Right, but they still that still forms a union and creates a, often creates a family. That's what you're talking about the struggles. In right, the but it's supposed to be for life, I not for agree now. With that. Cur- I agree, and that's what I say. It's not about what ought to be; it's about what is today. And right now, a man cannot have children in this country yeah. and not be signed up for the state contract. So but that's, I, that's I think, always been true. I think, but my my point is, why can't we change the laws first? Because we live in time and space, and you'll die alone without having having had kids and without having Why? the size of a family. Why? You guys are one of the most. You guys are one of the most influential media networks. We are. We are. And, and we're very persuasive. You, very powerful. You guys are. And yet we're not changing the divorce laws. Try as we might, it hasn't happened. <laughs> I, no, but you guys barely cover it. I talk about it all the time. What are you talking about? I talk about not, marriage on my show if, probably every single day. Right, but but when we talk about specifics, like like you like yeah. I was you know talking about the tender years doctrine. Yeah, yeah. You know you know it's like. Even in in California, sure. If but a woman, but the if fact, a woman, if a yeah. wait, 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 if a woman lies about paternity of of the child and it's not found out before the age of two, that man's on child support for life, mm-hmm. even though that woman committed fraud. And and these are real things that mm-hmm. happen in this country. The man is on if if the if the father doesn't discover that he's not really the father. Yeah. Because yeah. he he's Correct. acting basically as like Correct. a duped Correct. adoptive father or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Again, because the way the way the laws are is it goes in best interest of the fu- to the child, which generally means the best interests of the mother. Right, but you don't, Pearl. You do not need to convince me that okay. the divorce laws are dreadful. Right. What you do need to convince me of is that men ought not to be married until the laws are changed. What? Why do men have to sacrifice their security for women's security? Women have, have women have made the choice to leave marriages. Women have made the choice to collect alimony and child support. 
Why do men need to sacrifice their security for women's? Because it is good for men to be married and to have children. That, well, that's, it's not that they're, they're forced or coerced. Then why, it's then, good for them. But then why is the reputation of marriage so bad? If this was a great product... Yeah, I don't people, think it's so bad. If this I, was th- I great, think it's the most well, popular great, institution because, in human history. Because, no, no, that's not true. Because you're out of touch. Why do we have phrases like happy wife, happy life? Why do we have phrases like it's cheaper to keep her? Why are those th- like we don't these don't just these aren't made up, Michael. Right, they're kind of funny little <laughs> jokes about, you know, marriage, which is the enduring institution, right, the popularity we, of which is why, attested to why, by its permanence why do throughout they human ring life. True? Why do they ring true? They don't it's, really ring true to me. Happy wife, happy not life to you, is, is but we're that's not, a happy not, wife, happy life is a recipe for a terrible marriage. We agree. Yeah, we agree. Right. But it's kind but, of a joke. I mean, we make little jokes about that. In the Henny, Henny Youngman line, take my wife, please. I might use but that why line, is but that I don't funny? mean it. Why is that funny? Because, because it's, it rings true. Because it's ironic. <laughs> Quite the opposite, no, right? It's but, funny because it's ironic. No, it's it's funny because this stuff rings. Like, I just... Yeah, okay. it's true. You bicker with your spouse sometimes. That's the truthful part. Mm-hmm. The ironic part is you don't actually want to give your wife away and take my wife, please. Okay, well... Right. <laughs> but, okay, it's cheaper to keep her. That's a phrase, right? Yeah, yeah. Why, why does it exist? It exists because uh, <laughs> divorce laws are so bad, okay. and that's what the joke is about. Okay, so it, again, if the marriage contract is so good, why do you have to convince men to sign up? If they're getting such great benefits from marriage. Be- because we live in a, a— The reason that we need to convince people to get married mm-hmm. is because liberalism has inculcated in people a, 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 an extreme individualism that and, and a, an extreme subjectivism mm-hmm. that disconnects their actions and their interests from reason and objective reality and the common good. That's mm-hmm. the actual reason why, and it's not just pertaining to marriage. It pertains to in, uh, building up uh, wealth. It pertains to mm-hmm. duties that are owed to the family, to the community, and to God. It mm-hmm. pertains to all aspects of public life. It's not just marriage, but because marriage is the fundamental political building block, it, you see it expressed there. I, I don't, I, I'm not against marriage, but I, again, I think that you're going, men, regardless of what I say, because I'm, I'm not going to convince the entire country to get married, like no matter what I say. You don't seem men, interested in doing so. <laughs> because I don't, I don't talk about in what I want the world to be. You I talk about how dreadful is. marriage is. I, I don't talk about, a, no, there's, there's good marriages, Michael. But, but marriage as we do it today is not marriage anymore. And I cannot, fault, I, 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 cannot, I cannot fault men for being cautious and some men just aren't going to get married because the laws are too favorable to women. And I, I think that, you know, okay, I'm going to tell a story. I want you to not interrupt me. Okay. Story. Can you please not? I need time. I would never interrupt a lady. <laughs> okay. So I do interviews of men that have been divorced often. Okay. And there is a guy I interviewed, and he married a Christian woman. Okay. Good, good Christian woman, no kids, not overweight, no, no, no tattoos. Checks all the boxes. No, no glaring red flags, okay? They have two children together. And what happened was one day he comes home. And when he comes home from work, the wife has filed a temporary restraining order on him. Women can get these just like that. He's kicked out of his house. No trial, no evidence, no nothing, okay? Now... He has to wait. It's during COVID. So he has to wait a year, year and a half to even get to see his children, okay, and even fight for them. And by the time he gets to court, the mom's been in the kid's ear saying how terrible of a person he is, okay? Now they go to court and they say to him, well, you haven't been in the kid's life for a year, year and a half, even though she lied about the abuse and they figured that out in court. This man had, and I I saw his court documents, text evidence that this woman was planning to do this to him. In the year, he still had to pay the mortgage on the house. He still had to pay child support in that year, year and a half period. Goes to court. Now, he doesn't get access to his children. He hasn't seen his kids in two years. Michael, they live a mile from him. That's awful. A mile from him. He's so stressed out, he loses his job. Because, can you imagine going through that? Mm-hmm. And he's an average earner. He's not like, you know, because I've interviewed men that make, you know, I interviewed a guy from Texas. He spent $1.5 million on a divorce. He got his kids every other weekend. And, and these are real things. And Michael, yeah, yeah. the saddest, wait, wait, the saddest thing that you see is a man, I, I've interviewed so many men that I would not be surprised if they committed suicide sure. in the next year because they're, they're, the woman has completely ruined their reputation. She's called him an abuser. All of this stuff. So, his friends, it's 
completely different with his friends. His kids think he's the bad guy. He, he's out of money. And he has to start over at four, 40, 45, 50 years old. And men are nine times more likely. What do you mean start over? Start over as in money. Money, chill. Yeah. Like he, has, he has to start his life over. He, they're wrecked. They're yeah. wrecked in these. And, and the problem is in family court, it's not based on evidence. It is not. It is based on a balance of probabilities, meaning it is more likely that he did it than he didn't. Yeah. And women are not punished for falsely accusing men of abuse because they've changed the definition of abuse. And, and these are, even if it's even if it's 5% of men that this happens to, let's yeah. say out of 100, this happens to 5%, even, even in the Christian churches. You know, I would never, if I got on a plane and there was, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I, there was a 20% chance of I get to paradise and there's a 5% chance of it, it crashing. I'm not getting on. Right. And this is, and you have to understand, this is death to a lot of men. The idea that they're, they, they can't see their kids that are a mile from them. They're yes, sending them money. Yeah. And, and Glenn, you know, a guy brought, he's one of the guys that that happened to. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, he didn't, it's like a lot of these guys did everything that you guys say. And when you guys say get married young, a lot of these men don't know what they're signing up for. And you're not going to be there when their entire life falls apart. I interview them on the other side. And that's why when you just say, you know, just find a good Christian girl and get that's married. That's not exactly what I've, I've, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But it's, but, it's but, an important but, distinction. But when you say, which is the minority, that's not the majority of women. We know that's not the majority of women that, that are yeah. praying every day, that are going to Latin Mass. You know, I, I, yeah, I'm Catholic. The, Most of the women I went to school with are not practicing now. So th this is not the majority of women. And... and you know, I just don't think, I think sometimes you minimize the risk. You know, out of every 100 divorces, and I know we were going to go back and forth on the numbers, but just trust me that I'm, I'm not making this up. It's 30% it's are malicious. And, and by malicious, they're all malicious, malicious. Actually. no, no, I don't think, I don't say that. And I'm but not anti-marriage. I, th I, oh, okay. I, I, I think oh, divorces oh, fair, is fair. always malicious. But, but when I say malicious, I, I mean alienating the child or the father from the kids Putting them on child support, think, Alan. Ode. So that's, that's, th that's thirty. That, that's around out of every hundred divorces, around thirteen. Yeah. So I, again, that's, I, I that's would say it's higher. That's, that's not. But that's and that's that's not an insignificant number. Men, you know, I, I interviewed a guy. He spent one point five million on a divorce. Yeah. He gets to see his kids every other weekend. It's awful. It, it's Dreadful. awful, and and that's why you know we could go back and forth about you know the numbers, but I have just. I've seen so many men on, on the brink of suicide and they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Well, they, I don't know that they didn't do anything wrong, but, but I agree, that, uh, you know, it, the situation is just dreadful. We all do terrible things and there before the grace of God go all of us because we're all sinners. Uh, and, you know, the fact that something went so terribly wrong in their marriage suggests that, well, there's no such thing as no-fault divorce, so there, there was fault somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we agree so broadly that I'm not quite I'm not exactly sure what we disagree about. Mm -hmm. We agree that the divorce court system is dreadful. We agree that the divorce laws are terrible. Mm -hmm. We agree that modern dating is uh, challenging. But but I guess so. What I would say yeah. to switch things, I think men shouldn't vote for either party because neither party is taking their issue seriously. Uh, I mean, the issue where, of where, divorce. Is, where is where is mandatory DNA testing? You know, I mean, people I, I differentiate would, I would not on like these. Mandatory pair, people that well, around five percent of men, up to thirty. I mean, it's, it's disputed. Yeah. I don't want to go back and forth all day, but a significant number of men are raising children that are not theirs. You know, I, I, I the, talk. The line of there's a line in uh, I think it's the Odyssey of uh, where the son of Odysseus says, uh, "It's a wise man who knows his own father." It's true. It's been true for a long time. Okay. Well, I I don't know what that has to. You know. Well, you, you raised but, but, the question of paternity, and I'm saying this has been a, a longstanding trope yeah, in the Western tradition. Yeah. Go back to the earliest days. My, my point is they're not taking men's issues seriously. I, I don't think either party is. So I, I think really if it was up to me, I would say men don't vote until one of the parties starts taking you seriously. Sure. I, think, I think the left should try to buy them. Not, not buy them, but like, you know, if Biden came out tomorrow and said, hey, we're going to make divorce and family court more fair, we're, we're going to— you know, we're going to do mandatory DNA test. You might disagree with that. I wouldn't but like I, that. I, okay, find, well, that. I, I find that to be quite disrespectful to the institution of marriage. Well, I, I think it's more disrespectful that that women are lying to men about paternity. And that, that's a real problem. Sure. Yeah. So Yeah, yeah de deceitful women, that's a problem yeah. throughout history. Yeah. Right. And even if it's 2%, 1%.
That's one out of every 100 guys. That, that's a real issue. And there's, think- no, there's no penalty for women doing it, even though it's fraud. Sure. And so yeah. until, until the right and the left start taking men seriously when it comes to their, you know, their issues, I, 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 don't th- I think men should bow out. But, you know, this is Pearl's world. We're, we're, like, but we're in, not, per- but in, per- in Pearl's world, <laughs> yeah. again, but, so it's confusing because you say, I don't ever tell men what I think they ought to do, but you just said, I think men should well, bow I, out. Well, I think that would be a strategy, sorry. <laughs> right, but, you, but you, you say the same kind of thing. You say, I think men ought to wait until the laws change before they get married. Now, no, I think, no. I, I, every man has to decide for himself. You just told men what to do when it comes to voting. Every man has to decide for himself what he does in his personal life. I think a good strategy, I think a good strategy could be that men walk away until they, the laws change. I, I think okay. it's fair. Like, I think that's a good strategy. There are other ones. Maybe you could come up with some. You guys, you guys are one of the largest, you know, political media organizations. Well, I'm, but but I think a better strategy for you guys would be to maybe start catering, you know, to start because I, I don't really think banning no fault divorce would really change much. People, the culture would is change what it a is. ton. You know, when when they introduced I, no fault divorce in uh, 1969, I think it was in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, the divorce rates shot up 500 percent within two years. Mm-hmm. It, ending no, no fault divorce. First of all, no fault divorce wasn't even recognized in liberal New York mm-hmm. until 2010. That change alone, it wouldn't solve the problem, but it would go a long way towards. Yeah, the but that generation, a lot of them were separated, anyways. Separation so, is one thing. Divorce yeah, is quite another. Look, I, it, look that would that would mitigate would all the problems it. you're describing. I would I would be for it. I just don't see that getting passed anytime soon. I, right. I don't see any of these yeah, laws yeah. getting passed. That's why I'm but telling men don't put off your life and put off having a family until the laws I, get passed. Well, I, I think we would have a lot better chance of getting them passed if that was the number one issue you guys were talking about. If that was the number one issue. It is it is that, it is. I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating. Okay. It might be the number one issue I've talked about. I mean, I just—I was okay. just at CPAC, and I got in all sorts of trouble for saying that the way that people describe marriage these days right. is wrong, and marriage is a lifelong union between a man and a woman. Right, for the but, good but of, you would agree it's not how it's practiced today. It, it right? is how it's practiced by the people who have a would reasonable marriage. You would marriages. agree it's not how it's practiced today, not in your, the special religion, but by and large. Again, when you say special by, religion, I, 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 it seems to me you're trying to marginalize the Catholic faith or other faiths. But I'm what, Catholic. <laughs> I suppose, but I think you're marginalizing it anyway. But but religion is just a, a habit of virtue that inclines the will to give to God what right. he deserves, right? So I, it's just it's just kind of the way that one Sorry. Acts. The the reason I say that is because I grew up in the Catholic faith faith and I don't think that exempts men from the risk of getting married. You know, one girl I interviewed, you know, she was from a orthodox, not orthodox, sorry, Latin mass, like one of those communities and she had horrible parental alienation. I mean, her mother, there's a whole book that, um, it's called How to Destroy a Man. And it, it lays out the, the framework exactly for how women can legally destroy a man, take his assets, take his children, and ruin his reputation. I wouldn't recommend this is reading a step, it. Yeah. This is a step, no, I've read it. No, I mean, not, not for that, but, but it's like a step-by-step guide. And, and this, this mother did it. And this was in a Latin mass, like, orthodox community. And that's why I say— yeah, Again, because of these under- terms are sort of ambiguous and, mm-hmm. and in co- contradictory even mm-hmm. in this case, so I'd, I'd be curious to see the actual case well, that I, you're describing. Well, I guess, I guess what I would say is sometimes women have feelings about religion at 22, and at 42 they change. And there's no consequence for women leaving right now. But people in could fact, change their minds at any in given In fact, time. correct. But in right. fact, they're paid to do so. And so I will never shame men for making a decision that's right for them. You're, but you're going further than not shaming them. I, I think we've gotten to the point where you've okay. said it's at least a good strategy to walk away from the institution of marriage until the laws have changed. You no, just said that. I say, I say, do whatever you want, guys. But, I'm but no, I said, what you I said, just said to me. I said, regardless of what I say, men will sure. walk away. So let's establish. Yeah. Let's establish men won't listen to Pearl, as you just said. <laughs> let's establish that you think men ought to make their own decisions. Yeah. We've long established. Mm-hmm. You also just said. It is a good strategy for men to walk away from the institution of marriage until the laws change. You just said that. No, no, I, I was talking about the vote. They that should walk the vote, away the from vote, the, the voting, the ballot that box. The, that, yeah, that was the ballot box. Until the okay. I, I said, so at the very no, least, we've. I said that. that's that's a strategy that men can do. A good strategy, but but not just a bad strategy. <laughs> I mean, how else? I mean, what what have conservatives succeeded in conserving the last fifty years? Uh, not not so much as the women's bathroom, I guess. But but, you, <laughs> but but so you're asking them to get on a team that's losing, right? I mean that's what Whitaker Chambers said when he left being a communist 
to become a conservative. Right. He thought he was he was uh, joining the losing team. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's the case. I mean, in the long run, we're all dead, and uh, the world's going to fall to pot, and then the second coming will occur. But that's not an excuse to avoid doing what is just and good and right, and in line with our natural but, desires. But it's not unjust for men to not want to have children. And it's family. disordered. It's disordered for men not <laughs> we to. We have priests. Yeah, yeah. It, Clerical life, yeah. some are called by the charism of celibacy, mm -hmm. but for most men, and, and by the way, they're called to the charism of celibacy in the priesthood because the priests act in the person of Christ, who is the bridegroom of the church. But for people who are not following a religious vocation, they are called to family life. Okay, if there are not enough wives, what are men supposed to do? It's about 50-50 in the population. If, if there are not enough wives, what are men supposed to do? If there is basically parity between men and women. So there are enough wives. Okay. Well, then I'm sure you'll see a spike in the men signing up no, for marriage. No, I, I agree that there's a great deal of selfishness and liberalism, mm -hmm. but I think that's the view that you're articulating and the view of the red pill people is basically mm -hmm. a view that, that presumes a liberal, secular, individualist anthropology that is contrary no, to that's... natural reason and the flourishing of men. No, I, I would disagree with that. How am I wrong? You're saying men ought to just pursue their own interests regardless of, say, uh, I, I think nature. when you have a smoking gun, to, I mean, that's essentially what it, like, you know, I tell you these stories and you just say, sign up anyways. I'm you saying know, be prudent. But I'm saying be prudent in everything in life. You know, uh, you could get in a car and uh, get in a car accident because of, uh, the other day, a teenage girl driver, another girl yeah. hit me while I was driving. Yeah, but but I'm not I, saying don't get in a car. I'm saying Yeah, but if I, if I get into a car and I see 30% of people crashing, I'm not getting into that car, regardless of the 10% of people that succeed. But it, then even further, to use your uh, airplane analogy, I guess the difference is mm -hmm. getting on an airplane and going to Hawaii would be a nice thing to do, and I might like to do it sometime. Uh, Getting married and having children is not merely a nice thing to do that I might, in my subjective preferences, like to engage in, but it is an aspect of my nature. It is an aspect of my purpose to which I am aimed. That's, so, the so That's why do, I say— do you, think, do you think yeah. men's masculinity comes from marriage? I think men's masculinity and virility comes from their nature as men. Do you, do you think, but you don't think it comes from marriage? I think that marriage it fulfills a man's purpose, and in as much as he is more a man, the more he fulfills you think his purpose. Marriage, you think purpose. marriage is a man's purpose? I think that, uh, well, man's ultimate purpose is to know God and to serve him in this world and enjoy him forever and eternity. Okay. But so but, it wouldn't but, be, but, so it wouldn't be but marriage? But subsidi subsidiary aspects of that would be, uh, for lay people, for instance, okay. to get married, which is a symbol of Christ's love for his church, mm -hmm. and to... But but even you know right, taking but, religion. But I'm aside asking for a like, second. can I get a yes or no? Do you think? Well, it's I'm a trying man's... to explain okay, to you, ahead, the, the, you know, the answer to the question okay. you're asking. Mm -hmm. But if you say, what's a man's purpose? And my purpose in this conversation mm -hmm. is to talk to you. Okay. That's one purpose. Mm -hmm. A purpose is also to uh, get to the nature of this question of marriage. Okay. Another purpose is to communicate that to to the audience. So there are all mm -hmm. sorts of purposes that we have. We have higher purposes and lower purposes. And so when you ask, is marriage part of a man's purpose? Mm -hmm. I say it is. It's not man's ultimate purpose, okay. but it is a symbol of his ultimate purpose, and it is a constituent part of his purpose and a natural end of his very nature. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the reason I say that you are adopting mm -hmm. what seems to me a liberal and individualist anthropology mm -hmm. here is, is because you are saying, Every man needs to make his own decision. Nothing's better or worse. I'm not recommending anything. I'm just, you know, you do you. Do think you. every man should make the same decision? In, in many matters, yes. Not between chocolate and vanilla ice cream, but, but between goods. Do you, do you feel like you goods, should tell yes. men what to do? Uh, in as much as I uh, correctly perceive okay. moral order, yes. Okay. So you think that you know what's right for every man? I think that I can, uh, I have a so like relatively Joe, reliable, if, okay. you'd, if you'd like sorry, to answer, sorry, God, God. I think I have a relatively reliable faculty of reason and moral conscience. And so okay. in as much as it is reliable, I can articulate the truth as I see it, which is all anyone does. It's what you're doing. It's what, it's what all people do when, okay. when we speak. Yeah, I, I don't think it's really our job as commentators to tell people what to do. But it's our job as human beings to perceive the moral order. Okay. Right? And yeah. to form judgments about that. Well, I, I disagree that... I disagree when you say it's the equivalent of feminism because right no, I'm, now, I'm saying right, it's, it's the equivalent of, of right, what, what you're articulating is a okay. liberal and individualist I, view, and therefore I, it's similar to feminism. I would say that fe right now, marriage is a feminist institution. Not mine. Right. Well, if your wife decides tomorrow she wants to leave you, it it will be. 
the divorce, not, law, the divorce not, laws are informed cor- by feminism. Correct, yeah. correct. And so marriage is regardless, an regardless, not, regardless. Mar- marriage is a natural institution that that uh, predates the states that correct. Right, but there is no way for you to get married in this country and have children and not be a part of the institution of marriage legally. Yeah, you have because to sign correct, up for correct, the marital. Correct. Though you can mitigate so, risk so, even by so state. So there's a whole... There's a whole business of lawyers making money off of marriage, of feminist um, women's shelters making money off of marriage, you know, and, and you're, you're saying, you know, sign up anyway. And I, I think, I would disagree that it's feminist because what you're saying is sign up for the institution that is run by feminists. What, well, I guess <laughs> you're putting those words in my mouth, sign up anyway. What, what I am saying is men ought to do the right thing that uh, at, the, at the basis of the natural law is, is one precept, which is do good and avoid evil. Mm-hmm. The first thing that we apprehend is, is being, right, is okay. existence. Uh, the next thing that we apprehend, and this is the first thing we apprehend through our practical reason, you know, mm-hmm. which is oriented toward action, mm-hmm. is good. Doing good. When, okay. when you do something, you want to do good and you want to avoid evil. And so what I'm saying is, that marriage and family, the end of marriage being the begetting and education of children and secondarily mm-hmm. the, the mutual support of the spouses, is good for man. So I, I'm not saying this isn't Michael's crazy yeah. view. I'm saying this is a natural part. It's why this has existed throughout all of human society mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it's why we are all inclined to do it. Mm-hmm. Whether or do not you, Pearl or you, Michael wants okay, it. Okay, so do you think it's wrong if a man wants to build a business? And he Depen- doesn't, depends he what doesn't, the business is. He does okay, okay, but... Whatever. It, for and instead of pursuing women, he pursues his business. I instead of that, pursuing a marriage and a family. I think it would be a mistake for a man to uh, pursue material good uh, to the exclusion of better goods. Hey, what about coaching? What about teaching? Like why? I think I think our jobs in the commercial economy are good things, but right. I think modern liberalism and individual uh, anthropologies. Uh, make an idol out of that, and that is to the harm of men. We, we, we shouldn't make an idol out of our jobs. I like well, my job a lot, but it's and, not my whole life. And the other problem you get into is, again, you know, just because a man has kids, it, it doesn't mean that the kids will, I mean, you have men raising kids that grow up to hate them. I mean, even in the story that I, that I showed you. It's bad, you, yeah, it's bad. <laughs> but, in, but, within marriage or divorce, you mean? Both, both. Yeah, both. both. I, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, kids get alienated from their fathers how? that are, you know, in the same household. It how happens is, all the time. How does it time. happen, though? I agree it happens. Well, I mean, the man's working. And so the mom spends more time with the kids. The mom's talking all day in the kid's ear. It's a really sad thing. So you're saying the mom hates the dad. Yeah. That seems to be a problem that predates the alienation. No, it totally is. It It totally is. And, you know, because— And the schools and the TV and everyone says the men are dolts and idiots. You know, yeah, I agree. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But but that's that's my point is just because a man has kids, it doesn't mean his legacy will live on. No, again, I don't think the kids are the chief yeah. end of, of man in the world, mm-hmm. but I do think it is a, a, an important aspect of it and an expression of it. And, and you, you can raise kids mm-hmm. who are likely not to hate you. There are things that you can do and things that you can uh, you know, avoid mm-hmm. that will increase that likelihood. I mean, that's, that's true, but there's no guarantees. And I think no guarantees it's, of anything and in I this think life, it's, for and all. I think, it's, I think it's a higher risk. And I think I, I would really encourage you to spend a couple days in family court I, I think I think it would really. Yeah, I mean, I've, seen, I've had close friends who have been in brutal, brutal divorces. I mean, I've seen yeah. a, a little bit of it up close. It's dreadful. Yeah, and and at times, you know, they didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah, because, well, they've, they've women, all done something. If women, if women feel like yeah. leaving, they can leave. We can leave. They can. But how does the marriage break down? You know, it's like um, Hemingway describes <laughs> bankruptcy, and the sun also rises. Mm-hmm. It happens gradually and then suddenly. Uh, so it seems to me, I, I'm not letting women off the hook. Sometimes crazy, you know, feminist ladies go nuts and divorce their husbands and poison, you know, the kids against their father. And they do all sorts of terrible things. But, uh, you know, marriage is a union of, of two people. And uh, I agree with you. A lot of people, when they get into marriage these days, including the men, especially the men, mm-hmm. uh, don't, not only don't know what they're signing up for, they don't even really have a vision of what they're signing up for. They don't even know what they want to be signing up for. Correct. And uh, so that's a mistake. That's an error on the part of the men often and of the women. But the men are the head of the household, so more responsibility falls onto them. And uh, and then the way they lead their lives. I would say— But do they get authority to? Who do they give authority to? No, do, do the men have authority in their own households? In the good marriages, they do. Would you say that's the majority? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, these days people say that two men can be married. So, you know, people are very confused about what marriage is. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the real marriages and the flourishing marriages, uh, yeah, the men do have a what, headship. What percent of marriages do you think are happy after 50 years? Well, I, I, all I have to go by is the uh, general social survey and some of the Chicago mm-hmm. studies that come as a result of that. And the evidence is that, uh, according, again, according to st- if, statistics if, if and social 50% science, divorce. Yeah, g- granted anywhere from 40 to 50% divorce. Yeah. But, but nevertheless, according to the GSS, mm-hmm. which is probably the biggest data set we have on this, uh, the happiest people are men and women married with children. Uh, followed why? by men and why? women married without children. Well, I'll come to that. Okay. Followed, by, uh, <laughs> followed by divorced parents um, with, without children, followed by divorced parents with mm-hmm. children. Um, and, and one Chicago study from last year showed the happiness gap between married and unmarried to be 30 points. So you're talking about, again, how do you measure happiness? I think a lot of it's bunk, but well, as and, much as you can. And the men that get married are, tend to be tall. I mean, women select for tall, handsome, successful men. That's how I describe myself. All <laughs> but you, you see, so you're attributing it to marriage. And I'm, I'm saying the, the men that women pick are happy anyways. The, you're, say, you're saying happier people are more inclined to get married. Am no, no. Right? Well, partially, but... No, I'm saying that women pick tall, handsome, successful men, and I would imagine that they would be happier. <laughs> because the men are hot and rich. <laughs> no, not hot. Why are you doing that? That's what you just said. Tall, tall handsome, handsome, successful, I said hot. happy. You said tall. We could add in okay. happy. T- I mean, do women tend to, you know, women tend to want tall, happy, successful men. So I wouldn't necessarily just attribute it to marriage, even though in some cases that helps. I'm, I'm having a little trouble following. You're saying because because the- you guys always you guys always attribute what you guys always attribute if a man's happy, it's because of his marriage. I'm and just I'm saying, saying there ma- are I'm other. I'm just saying factors. married people are, are okay, in as sorry, much as ahead. one can uh, in as much as one can can measure happiness. Married people seem to be significantly happier than unmarried people. Okay. Um, then but, men, but again, then even mental, then mental sign right up. I, I don't. I think I think people do things that are extremely perverse today because of um, largely because of individualism and liberalism. But but even that word happiness is is important because you know we say we can't measure happiness. Mm-hmm. I don't even know that we can define happiness now. Okay. What you know? What do we even mean by happiness? Mm-hmm. I have a I have a definition that I go by. But okay. I, what do, what do you mean by it? I guess I couldn't say definition off the top of my head. I see what you mean. Right? I mean, yeah. it could, so many people mean so many different things by it. I always go by good old Uncle Aristotle's definition of happiness as eudaimonia, which is a rational activity conducted in accordance with virtue. And so the reason I mention this is not just because I love, you know, the old dead thinkers, uh, but because I think they had something right that okay. will help to guide us through this very confused modern time. The way that you are describing marriage Mm -hmm. seems to be from a from an unmoored perspective of an unwhat unmoored meaning not grounded in something Uh, uh, meaning uh, it's a little subjective it's a little uh, wishy washy men can do whatever they like you pick some people have a different purpose (laughs) that's not what I said I thought you said men can do whatever they like that not not, I'm not going to wreck I you took issue with me for saying that I was coming to a moral judgment about how men no I I think that every man. Every man has to decide for himself. But I wouldn't recommend, say, like... How should he decide? <laughs> um, following, in an ideal world, following God and his purpose. Right. So following God and his... And how do we, how do we come to know our purpose? Mm, I, I mean, I think following God typically men find how do, it. How do we yeah. follow God? Um... You know, going to church every Sunday, you know, praying. You know, I think there's ways that you can't studying the Bible, mm-hmm. but you know, and I'm not, I'm not like a preacher. You know, you're but, not. The, yeah. the thing you keep leaving out. I agree. All those things are yeah, really good to do. Yeah. The thing you keep leaving out is reason, and it's the thing you keep taking issue with with yeah. me, where I keep saying marriage is a rational act. It uh, was. I don't it, know if it is now. <laughs> uh, but it, even though the laws are bad and the politicians are dummies, even still, it's a it's a rational act. Uh, over and above the qualities of the state because of human nature, because men and women are different, because we are a rational creature, so we can, uh, you know, mm-hmm. perceive of things like abstract justice. Animals mm-hmm. can't do that. My, my whiskey glass can't do that. 
Uh, so we can do that. Men and women are different. We're not like the feminists say. They say we're identical. We're not identical. I agree. We're not. And like the feminists and some of the some, it would seem, of the red pill guys would would imp- imply we're not totally opposed to one another who? in our interests. The uh, who who would suggest this? Yeah, no, I just you guys always say red pill guys. I never yeah. know. Who I don't like to give them airtime because I find them to be huge jerks and they have smaller audiences and I don't want to <laughs> popularize them. But I think we know some of the people that we're talking about. <laughs> I think. Okay, okay. Uh, and and I, I, if you think it's an unfair characterization, yeah. please tell me. I think that well, I just, the, I don't, the way you're— I don't speak for every red pill but, guy. But you're so. describing the, the interests of men and women as being quite mm-hmm. opposed. You've been talking about it this whole time. The, you know, the, the mothers when they're staying the way at home the laws are The way the laws are today. Not just the laws, the behaviors. You're saying the mother at home is poisoning the children against their father. It's very apart. common. Right. So anyway, uh, that's the view it's I'm discussing. It's very common. But, yeah. uh, but again, I don't think that that is ultimately the relation between men and women is hostile interests. I think, call me crazy and old-fashioned, mm-hmm. I think that men and women are complementary. We're physically complementary with one another. And we I are agree. spiritually complementary with I one agree. another. I agree. And so when I say that uh, marriage is a rational activity, mm-hmm. I mean that the fact that man is social, the fact that men and women are complementary, the fact that men and women are coupling creatures and that it is in our interest at a very basic level to procreate and therefore and consequently to educate the children uh, makes marriage a natural institution that uh, does not actually change no matter what the politicians say. I think that that's easy to say in your position. I think it's very difficult. And I, I, don't think people I, say I that would, I would agree that marriage is a natural thing. Mm-hmm. I, I would agree that men and women are better together. But I think when you're paying people to do the wrong thing, which if a man has children in this country, the woman is being paid to leave. You're going to have a higher percentage of women that do it, yes, religious or not. And no, until, they're much, much and, less likely. And, but re- religious or not, the woman will not care in divorce court. She will. And, and, the the and, religious and, woman will, is more likely to care. If we're, if we're going to go off of the numbers, it's roughly 25% to a third of Catholics. That's an insignificant number. Right. But it's like 5% That's that's Catholics. That's... <laughs> and it's like 10%. I don't... Those, those, like no, those numbers include people over a certain age, under a certain age. That's <laughs> a different... moving the goalpost. No, that's... Uh, it's not moving the goalpost. It's something that you should consider. Okay, the, so but I'm considering. So, but, but you you mentioned the statistics, so, but then you so, say I can't trust so, the statistics when they contradict no, your argument. No, no, I'm no. That's not what I said. I said that over the age of forty, roughly thirty-five, it's a different time, and the women of today are not the women of yesterday. It's a different. You know, we would agree that it's a lower. I mean, just going on whatever. I mean, I don't know about you. I had never met a sex worker in my life. Yeah, <laughs> I had never. No, I never had. But I grew like I grew up in a Catholic community Though, that you, wasn't normal. Yeah. Because it, but because now that technology I'm seeing now, didn't exist. But now right. I'm seeing now I'm seeing you know ex porn stars as preachers. <laughs> you haven't seen that? Oh, it's no. oh yeah. At least they're ex porn oh, yeah. stars, better than current porn oh, stars. Thank God. You know? yeah, but people, no, <laughs> but, I mean but, but even that. But that's my that's my point. I mean, you is, know, look, is, is, Saint Paul persecuted Christians? You know. <laughs> And then he was knocked off a off a horse on the road to Damascus, and you know became the apostle to the Gentiles. So pe- people can change their lives, and I think that's something you're kind of downplaying here. No, I, I'm not downplaying that people can change their lives. What I'm downplaying is that it, not downplaying. What I'm saying is that it's not really wise for men to date former sex workers, regardless of what they say. Why not? <laughs> why not? I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it's ideal, but, um, but why not? Because I why think the best wise? predictor of Future behavior is past behavior. So then you are sort of denying that people can change. No, no, I'm not denying that people can change. I would say most people don't change hmm. in, in general. Like, I, I wouldn't say women go date a criminal. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> I wouldn't. You know, there, there might be the exception, but it doesn't make the rule. Yeah, but, I, you know, I'll tell you, I, growing up in New York, I, I know some reformed criminals. Who are actually reformed? Who are you know? Yeah, but the difference is criminals actually have consequences, where women tend to not have consequences for their decisions. You don't think the women? I think the women, modern women, face a lot of consequences. They don't want to admit. No, it. no, they're we're they bailed get, out of every bad decision we make. I don't think so because you can't get bailed out of reality. So, like, I agree. You know, the divorce courts are jilted toward women or whatever. But, but like the woman who goes to university, I'm sure you get these letters. I get them too. Mm-hmm. Woman who goes to a university is told. Hook up with every guy you can. Study some. She chooses to, not told. She's also told, and she chooses to. Yeah, she's she also told by the to, culture because that's what she wants to do. But she's also told to do it by the culture. You can't downplay that. 
Right. I, you can be told to do so. I could be told to jump off a bridge that doesn't. Right. Mean I, I know, but you it. just said she's not told that, and I'm saying she very much is. Told well, that I, I'm saying she she doesn't have to listen. I think it takes accountability off of women when we're constantly saying that the world told you to, no, and I, that's why you did it. No, no, no. I, I agree that their wills yeah. have been malformed, and that our, our entire education system, mm-hmm. bro- broadly speaking. Uh, and now indulges the lower passions and mm-hmm. denies the rational will and denies even the place of reason and truth in, in public life. But she, So she does that, and she, and she makes bad choices, and she picks some dumb major, and she graduates, and she's told, don't get married. you got to go to, move to the city, and you got to sleep with a thousand men, and you got to get a job working as a middle manager at a widget factory. And you're going to do that, and you're going to totally bypass your childbearing years, sleeping around and going out mm-hmm. for brunch, and working for Mr. McGillicuddy at the Witches Factory. She chooses to do that. She's choosing it, and she's making a poor choice, and she's being encouraged to do it by a fallen culture. And then she's going to wake up one day, and she's going to be about 34, and she's going to regret all of these decisions, Mm -hmm. and she's going to cry into TikTok. That's what's Mm -hmm. going to happen. That is a consequence. Mm -hmm. Living with the consequences of being used by men, Mm -hmm. of not being able to have a harder time getting marriage, not having kids, and... and, Why is it the... Well, that's a consequence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do. I've been cutting you off a couple it's times. Okay. I do it's all right. apologize. I I've do. I've got thick skin. I do. I don't. I don't mean to cut you off. It's okay. Um, but because my question is, why? Why do we always say is used by men? Because men, like, uh, women are, use women for sex. <laughs> no, but women don't. Women don't use. You know, there are women that hunt top men down and try to sleep with them. I'm sure the top men are th- the top. I mean, I don't know what top men. But I know, probably but see, some pickup artist. Even the way, even the way you describe it, it's like always putting and, it on the men. Because men and women react differently to sex, and because men tend to pursue in sex, and women tend to be pursued. Because oh no, not the top guys. You know, oh, what do you gosh. mean by a top guy? Yeah, like I, 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 I've interviewed. <laughs> I had um I had Brittany uh, Renner on my show. Do you know who that is? I don't. You know, there are, there are girls that that. They learn every, she talks about this. They learn every single thing about, like, they become targets, the men. Yeah. You know, and they 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 get the guys to sleep with them. They try to steal condoms. Like, it, it's, this is who, not. But who's a top man? You mentioned a woman. Who's a top man? And am I a Well, this is, this is something. <laughs> I want to be. If you were dating again, if you were dating again, you might be. I would be. All right. That's good. <laughs> you might be. I mean, women, when there's money, you know. Just my money? It's not my <laughs> sparkling personality and my good looks? All right. Look it, look it. There. <laughs> okay. But I, I just notice in the language, like somehow it's always the men's fault when we talk about sin. So even, no, in, even in that sin, women's it's, sin, it's, but it's women are women easily, are, w- w- women are taken advantage of because I, I disagree. W- do you, you think men and women relate to sex in the same way? I, I think that at times women have more sexual power than men. I'm not denying. And, and so uh, women and always so have more women, sexual power. I mean, than women men. take advantage of. You could say women take advantage of lonely men on OnlyFans. But, but I'm. They do. <laughs> what I'm. What I'm yeah. asking is, do you think that men and women relate to sex in the same way? No. They don't. That's why not. we talk about men and women in sex differently, and we ascribe different. Moral, right, but uh, but I think your ideas. accountability for the action it is still it's on you. So I, I don't think when when women sin, it, it's the fault of society. I don't think it's the fault the men are just using you. You know, <laughs> I I think that when women do that, it's it's a choice. Sure. Do you think and, uh, people and can be deceived? I think women play dumb a lot. It's like I'll I'll interview these women on abortion, and they're like, oh, I didn't know what you didn't have Google. She, yeah, yeah. Well, you say they play dumb, which they do, but are they yeah, dumb sometimes? Yeah, but that's fine. That's that's <laughs> well, <laughs> you would say of. yes. You would say yes. Yeah, so people but, obviously but can be deceived. They can be deceived, but you're still accountable for the choices that you make. And I, I don't necessarily. I think sometimes it's just the easier choice. Like women don't want to do the hard thing. What's the hard thing? Um, I would say it's easy to sleep around. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, an easy thing to do. Women, it's, are it's a temptation women for men are, too. Yeah. Correct, more but, but it's women. but it's easier for women. Yeah, my, that's exactly what I'm saying. Correct, that, correct. But that's the getting. That's kind of why I I yeah. attack the guys for using women. Well, what because, yeah. what percent of men are even using women? It's like eighty percent of women are involved in hookup culture. Maybe five percent of men. Yeah, and I can tell you, yeah. I can even say this like from doing my show. I'll interview a guy, 
he's sleeping with like three, four, he'll go on yeah, that's <laughs> three, bad. four chicks from the show. <laughs> right, that's bad, I, right? That's bad. You I, would say that's a bad thing for you. I, I, sure, sure. But yeah. but my point is more women. There's five women partaking in it where there's one man. But and it's so, one man doing it so, five times so, as much as the women. That's why right, I'm, that's why point, I'm knocking the my, men. But my point is more women are responsible for hookup culture than men. But the, but the men are more, it. you just acknowledge the men are more culpable in that they are doing it it, it more frequently than the women. No, I would say there's there's five women, so it's way more. But they're individually do each it. doing it with one, the, with the same. But, guy. but I'm talking about like you're, you're basically saying to men, oh, don't sleep. But most men can't. Most yeah, men right. aren't. Which is good. That's so, actually a great limitation of their. Ugliness. Yeah, fine, yeah. fine, fine. But it's like their it's lack like, of riz. But it's just so funny, <laughs> the riz. <laughs> but it's funny because it's like the the. The hookup culture, women are more responsible for hookup culture than men. And if, and if, if, right, there's, 10 they, women, if the, there's 10 women that partake in it, there's less men that can't. No, women are more right. responsible for hookup culture than men because they allow men to sleep with them. And they're the ones who are being pursued. So I agree with you on that. Well, well, the top, the top men are, the women are pursuing them. I would, if you look at like, but. Yeah, I, again, do we have an example of a top man? <laughs> I mean, examples that I think of, and I know because this is always where the convo goes, then it's like the religion decides who's a top man. But I'm talking about like who women. No, I, this is the first I'm hearing okay. this term, and I would like okay. it to apply to me, but perhaps you won't. So <laughs> okay, who's a top an, man? An example of, of a type of man that women go for is, say, you know, athletes. Yeah. That, Sneaker that's... chasers. Jersey chasers, we call them. <laughs> yeah, 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 correct. I, I'm saying like in those examples, the women are pursuing them. It's not the women being innocent and used. It's women driving to the games, getting a hotel. Yeah, they're interested. Stalking. In you know, uh, yeah. there was one chick. God, it was crazy. She, <laughs> she, she tells me that, um, like, like, <laughs> God, this is just such a crazy story. They literally, like, figure out where there's, um, like, a, what do you call it? A hangout, I guess, after games where the athletes all go and the wives aren't there. And there are women that go there and try to get men to cheat on their on their wives. Groupies. They're like groupies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but my my point is there are far more women responsible for hookup culture than men. But yet, when I go on podcasts, we always somehow bring the conversation back to the men, even yeah. though far more women are engaging in it. This this is, I guess, And we why. can't so, even definitively say don't date a woman that did sex work. I'm, I'm del- I find this kind of utilitarian... A view of responsibility mm-hmm. actually kind of delightful when you say, look, there's five women who are doing it. Though I think it does cut the other way because each of these total Sigma Chad dudes yeah. are sleeping with like five women each. So I think either way it kind of cuts. But but that's that's not really my question at all. My question is, don't men have a moral responsibility to act in a certain way? Men cannot lead women that don't want to be led. Yes, then, yes, hold on, yes, that, guess, yes. Wait, 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 I'm going to finish. Let me finish, Michael. Okay, I was trying to lead you. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. I, I do think men have a moral responsibility to act in a certain way. Yes. Great. Yeah. Well, there you but have I it. But I don't think men have to get married if there are not enough wives to go around. But there... It's like it doesn't... If there are not enough you, women who you say you know, are married. You, know, you know what's so crazy? What? Under the age of 35... Yeah. Now, the problem is with a lot of these, st- I don't know, we're going to go Statistics back. Statistics are all but, fake, but I'm happy to hear them. Well, I'd believe it too, just from interviewing a thousand women. Sure. Five to 15% of women under 35 are on full OnlyFans, cam, or some sort of sex work. According, according. There's a guy who, who does research for me. Who, really, okay. Dr. David Baker, he's like a published author, really, really okay. smart guy. Um, that seems high to me. That's I would... what I thought too. I swear to God, that's what I thought until... I interviewed a thousand women. I can't even count how many sex workers I've met. But don't don't you no, think the we kind of women? Random, no, we, no. Sorry. You don't think the kind of women no, who go no, on like no, not at all. relationship podcasts no. are kind of self-selecting? No. Don't you think the trad women just don't go on camera? That's well, been my experience. No. No, I think that. No, I, think trad I, women I would say women. when you when you do a thousand not do, but when you when you interview a thousand women, you just start to see patterns. I've had Christian women on. I've had women from Eastern Europe. I've had women. We we don't select. Eastern Europe for, is like the hotbed of pornography in the world, isn't it? Well, I mean, I, I could say Japan. I could I could keep going. I've, I'm in London, so it's pretty international. Yeah. I guess my only point and, is, and, women who go on shows to be interviewed tend to be a little less trad than the women who stay home and bake bread. You know, a lot of women under the age of thirty that yeah. are staying home and baking bread. I do. I, I think that 
it's again, as I've said, you guys are a bit out of touch to what the average man is experiencing dating in this country. Or are we just in touch with a, with a different group of people, I guess is my point. Well, You're right. When, when one surrounds oneself mm-hmm. with people who are divorced or with people who are on OnlyFans or whatever, then it's, it, it kind of skews right. where you would find the median or the average. But, but if you spend your time in like the middle of America with like in nice parishes. Well, you just contradicted things. yourself because earlier you said that you had close friends that were divorced. I do, so even but in, it's not even the average. In, even in your circles, it, you, you still... Well, I'm from New York and I lived in LA, so, you know, it wasn't always, uh, you know... Yeah, right, but that's why sometimes I'm like, do you not see reality? Like, do you guys not see what's going on out here? It, yeah, like, I, and and, and I religious agree that, attendance in the younger generation, it's going down. It's lower than ever. Yeah, sure. Though, again, it kind of, you kind of got to get a little bit more specific about it because the, the people, first of all, there is a movement of young people going back to churches and they're going back to the more orthodox ones. Mm-hmm. They're not going to the hippy-dippy Good. egalitarian feminist. Yeah, ones. yeah. So, uh, you know, again, this is why I find the statistical arguments to be kind of uh, fruitless, which is, okay, you know, when we say something is natural, Mm-hmm. We mean it in two ways, right? Mm-hmm. We mean it in um, it deriving from the principles of nature, like a, you know, a tree sprouts from the ground, and we mean it in uh, in a way that involves free will, like you know, you can make a natural choice or an unnatural choice. Mm-hmm. And so, I guess what what I'm suggesting is we live at a time that is exalting really unnatural and disordered behaviors, mm-hmm. especially in the circles you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I'm suggesting maybe we ought to focus on these circles that are growing in a lot of places mm-hmm. where there there is a return toward reasonable behavior. Mm-hmm. What about what Glenn was talking about earlier? When he, he was talking about that, what verses were they? Proverbs 31. So Prover- Proverbs 31, verse 10, talks about how rare uh, virtue is like it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. For those who can't hear without the microphone, yeah, okay, the, yeah. you know, the, that a virtuous woman mm-hmm. is rarer than the finest rubies. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that would, even in the Bible, it implies that it's an exception, not the rule. Sure. And also the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. And, you know, our Lord says in, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, you know, what man has joined, let no man separate. Right, right. But when one out and of, he when, when, when a right. quarter of women are getting abortions, you know, it's the women that aren't do, like that aren't going along with this. But what is your point? Again, you're saying, my, you're citing my, the Bible to say people my, ought not my, to get married, but I'm, I'm No, I'm not saying say not that. to get married. I'm saying it's incredibly difficult for a man, a man to find a woman worthy of being a wife in but, the current climate. What, what, what do you think virtue is? What do I think? You brought up the terms. No, you brought it up. You're the one who said you, you said. <laughs> no, I, I don't use that word virtue. In pro- you just mentioned. The, oh, fine, you brought fine, up fine. the line of oh, well, Proverbs as a virtuous Glenn, Well, woman Glenn brought right. up the, but yeah. And then you brought up Glenn. So <laughs> what? So I mean, I, I just think there's a misunderstanding here because yeah. virtue mm-hmm. is not something that's static. Mm-hmm. Virtue is a habit. So you uh, cultivate virtues and you cultivate vices and their habits. It's like a drugs, you know, but, that would be a vicious it, habit. But shouldn't men marry women with good habits and good virtue? But the the, the way a habit works is it's not static in time. Right. It is something that continues and changes. Right, but but with and with can reverse. but with how unfair the laws are to men, again, don't you think men should be extremely selective? I question if yeah, I'm, you, not, I'm not saying that men ought, ought to you know throw a stick out the window and marry the first woman. It I mean, you you said you said an ex OnlyFans model. That's basically the equivalent. <laughs> I, I said that. Uh, like, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I basically. Come I, on, an ex Only. That's like the. I can't think yeah, of I anyone. I don't think anyone. I can't think of anyone worse for my. I don't know how you can't definitively say no to that. Like well, because a man like because, someone uh, that I loved and he was looking for a yeah. wife, you know, like my brother. And he said, well, I found this girl in church that used to do OnlyFans. I'd say, oh, please, no, anyone else. Yeah, yeah, I guess the please point. Please, God, you, you wouldn't yeah. want your son, you know, you, you have sons, right? I do. You know, you wouldn't want them to date an ex-OnlyFans model. Like, yeah, you I, would want them to be really selective, especially sure. with, with what's going up against them. I guess the point I'm making is yeah. that, that no one is beyond redemption. And uh, it seems to me you're saying people are beyond redemption. No, I'm saying that men don't have to forgive your sin, and actions have consequences. And and, and when we tell women, but no, no one's when, denying it'll be harder for an ex OnlyFans person to get married. It's, no one's it's denying that. Pretty much impossible, I would say. Yeah, it's, it would be very. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's but not well, yeah. <laughs> I know, but, I know, I know ex uh, pornographers who have gotten married. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. So it's not impossible, but it's it's harder. It adds a lot of challenges. Right. But I recommend we, people not you know do bad things. Yeah, yeah cor- correct, but. What we often, and I, I saw this, you know, even in the chastity speakers. Um, I'm sure you know him, actually, that Jason and Christiana Everett. I don't. 
Really? I don't act. It's like the number one chastity. Whenever I'm, you would I have. Know, I don't go to a lot of chastity events. I'm already married. I'm not, you know, I'm chaste. I yeah. Guess. I'm not <laughs> well, they would have them like come to our high school. And whatever sin the woman always did, it was always blamed upon the man. Hmm. Always. Like, it's always if she In the slept sense around. That I, if yeah. she slept around, it wasn't because she wanted to. It was because she was being used. Hmm. Do you see the difference? Well, there is a distinction here, which is that women are the weaker sex. So men bear greater responsibility. Eve eats the apple, but we, but all man sins in Adam. But how is a, a man responsible for women doing OnlyFans? That's a choice. Because, and well, that's what I think we should— we Because, should, well, men are the consumers in the case of OnlyFans, right? Yeah, but— the, So the, they, bear, they do bear some responsibility. Well, I mean, even they have to post it before there's any consumers. No, the, the the reason they post is because there's a, a market. Not not really. You know you know what the average OnlyFans. We're getting only back fans, to the chicken and the egg. No, no, of do you know do you know what the average OnlyFans model makes? It is Nothing. not about yeah, money. Well, they're duped. But why do they why do they get on? Attention. It's, they want attention. You know, there, there's women they, on there's women on podcasts and you, you see them, they they say they'll do it for free. They want attention. Right. But women the, will, I think the, you were on a show, right? On whatever? Yeah, didn't she that girl say that that she would do it even without the money? Or Maybe. Even, right? even if some we go, of, okay. some of what they say Michael, gets a little Michael, blurry. Let's go mind. outside. You know, let's walk. Yeah. So I went to Vegas. Yeah. You know, the women are walking around with the stickers on their boobs. No man made them do that. <laughs> the little pasties. Yeah. Yeah, but right. But why are they doing? It? You're saying again. I'm not. I'm no, not. I'm, saying, I'm, not, I'm uh, saying they like the attention. They know it'll attract attract attention. Right. So I, I'm not. I'm not saying that women aren't culpable when they do bad things. But what what I'm saying is that men share some of this culpability because they're the ones consuming it. No, I, I think everyone's responsible for their own choices, and I think that includes women. And, and the more we coddle women and right. say, "Oh, you poor thing, it was the men." Oh, you were lied to by feminism. Oh, the, everything's everyone else's fault. That's why you have these women at 35 that act like entitled brats. No, no, no. But, you know, <laughs> but I, I guess this is this is why I'm suggesting yeah. that, like, the, the view oh, I'm articulating. You might you might get a husband after only fan. No, I, no one's suggesting that that would be yeah. particularly easy. Right. But I guess the reason I'm I'm suggesting what would be probably the conservative or traditional or Christian view right. of marriage and the sexes. And the reason that I'm describing yours, and I yeah. take it the red pills view of marriage and the sexes as being liberal and individualist and feminist, is is because of well, what you just said. You said everyone is totally responsible for their own choices, and that that did not. Do you think not, people aren't responsible for their own choices? I think that our wills are conditioned by our environments and our education and public life because we're a social creature who lives in community with others. So, how do you explain people making completely different choices in the exact? I know siblings. There's, I know, I know siblings where one ends up doing yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, I mean, come on, you know. Right. With like, you have you have a couple kids, don't you? Yes. Yeah, they're different. Two and a half, I suppose. <laughs> so they have one on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Um, you know, people are different and they make different choices. So are you saying people aren't con- conditioned in, in their will by their environments? That's what, that's what an extreme liberal would say. And maybe you, that's what you believe. But I don't believe No, that. no, I, I think... I don't really know what that what that means, but <laughs> meaning meaning are are we affected? If you grow up in a really bad community where you're taught all sorts of bad things, where you're where you're introduced to drugs and porn and gluttony and just all this nasty stuff yeah. around, are you uh, more likely to fall into bad vices and habits and temptations? You're you're later? more likely, but you're still responsible for your decisions. You are a hundred percent responsible for the choices that you make. Sure. If a man chooses, you know. There, there are men that grow up in bad environments that choose to be millionaires, and there's others that choose to be drug dealers. And there's some who choose there's, to be millionaires and fail. So there's an, there's an uh, what you seem to be describing is mm-hmm. is a real primacy of the will, of the mm-hmm. individual will. And I'm saying that free will obviously exists, mm-hmm. but it's conditioned by other factors. What, why, why is okay. it that do marriage you, is collapsing? Is you, everyone just of their own free will, just totally absent environmental concerns? Because women, uh, want, just to, because women want to leave. Because when women got the choice to get money instead of have a father in the home, right. women have chosen to take so the So I money. think you've just proven my point, though. Even if what okay. you just said is true, mm-hmm. you're saying that a political and social condition changed the way that human beings, the women, the, no, uh, it, exercised their free will. It changed the incentives, but that didn't mean women had to take it. And but it so changed the way they exercised it. But it's not the government's fault. It's women's fault for making that choice. 
Right. It's not, but, it's not society's fault. It's women's fault. It's it's the person's fault for making. Everybody is responsible for their but, own. But sin. had the social condition and the law not changed, women would not have made those choices. In well, you would be you would be surprised, actually. I, th- I thought that's men, what you just said. I thought you just <laughs> said that the reason. No, the majority. Yeah. No, no, okay. I didn't say the reason. I said it was because women it started wanted then. to. No, I said it was because women wanted to. Women wanted women, to. Women, women have chosen. And it chosen. just coincidentally, they they all of a sudden women, decided they wanted to when the women, law changed. Women, women chose. Well, they wanted to before that. I mean, they fought they for didn't fifty years for abortion. So I, I'm saying when people, okay, we could go back and forth about what I want to do, what you want to do. All I look is at what people do. No, I'm not. I'm not. So I'm not talking about your individual desires at all. I'm talking about desire itself and the relation of of desire to. Mm-hmm. You, you seem to be saying that. Uh, people exercise their free will in something like a vacuum, you know, and therefore they bear all of the moral responsibility. And I'm saying that we're a social creature and there's, there's more to it than that. Do, do you, I'm just confused. Do you think you're responsible for the choices you make? I think I, I am a moral agent and I bear moral responsibility and that my ability to exercise my will is conditioned by my environment, by okay, the so laws and the, the envi- customs. Do you think the, the environment's responsible for the choices you make? No, that's not what I said. I said I'm a moral agent and I'm responsible for my Okay, so you actions, are responsible. But my free will, my ability to exercise my will is conditioned by the laws and the customs and the community in which I live, which is why it's not merely an mm-hmm. individual question, mm-hmm. but it's also a political question for okay. human beings who are the political animal. Well, that just sounds like a lot of words to me. It is a lot of words. <laughs> that I try to be <laughs> That's as making as I that's could. making it a bit more complicated than it needs to be from my point of view. Yeah, I think it's just and, describing and, reality. And no, I, I think but it's rea- not the, I think it's I think reality is that you are responsible for the decisions you make. I think that's the best, you know, you know, one thing I'm really grateful for, you know, in my How does one make a decision? I guess what might help us to break through this impasse. <laughs> How does one make a decision? How does one you you weigh the pros and the cons and you make a decision? Okay, so the way, so, well, you weigh the pros and the cons is part of it, and then you yeah. make a decision, so making and, a decision know, is just an a- exercise of the will. I think you're close, but, but, uh, you're, how does one- What, are you the CEO of decision-making? How do, no, I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm using my reason to, uh, you know, examine a, right. an aspect of human nature. Mm-hmm. How do you, how does one know the pros and the cons? Um, I mean, it depends what decision, but if, okay. But let's just take, in general, let's take, how does one take, know pros? How does let's one take, know cons? Let's take, let's take abortion. Can I, yeah. can I use an example? Is that a lot? Please. All right, abortion. You get pregnant, you Google abortions, and then you can decide. And you can weigh the pros and the cons. Of- so Google is one way. You, 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 the way that you ex- so what we've yeah. just concluded is the way that you no, exercise. Not, I use it as an example of one way. No, I think you, I think yeah. what you've said is right. Okay. But what we have yeah. agreed upon now is, is mm-hmm. that the way that one exercises free will, that is to uh, decides on a course of action, is one tr- tries to know something, mm-hmm. right? And then one, with the knowledge that they've arrived at, mm-hmm. uh, exercises their will in accordance with that knowledge, and that is what's what we call a free choice. Mm-hmm. And the, the example you used is perfect, because if you Google something, knowing that Google is like the worst leftist company ever in the history of the world, mm-hmm. you are very likely to get bad information. No, which I is did what it. which is what I people totally did it. Because because did, I was tired, did. I was tired of the simping. I was really tired of it. I was I was because I kept hearing people blaming the the men for women's like decision making when it came to abortion. And so I I Googled. Oh, you're saying Google gives you good information. I, I would say no, Google, the top thing when it's that you put in side effects of abortion are <laughs> depression. Anxiety, you know. It, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I think you're responsible for your choice. But, but, okay, you. Ju- but in principle, you just came to a really important mm-hmm. aspect of of free will, mm-hmm. which is that free will is predicated, at least in principle. Even if you like, I don't like Google. You like Google, but let's put that aside. <laughs> well, it doesn't. It actually things a little bit better. <laughs> thing might be better. Ask yeah. <laughs> But you said you've come to the correct conclusion, which right. is that free will is. The, uh, the ability to do something mm-hmm. is predicated on willing something, mm-hmm. and that is predicated on knowledge. Now, what I am saying, the reason why I'm saying that uh, your social environment and your education has some bearing on how you can exercise your free will, is that when people are fed a bunch of BS as mm-hmm. knowledge by the schools, by the media, by Hollywood, by who's everything, the, the then that is, let me just finish my point. Okay. 
then when your knowledge base that you are, the, the intellectual aspect that you're basing your, your free action on is compromised and false, mm -hmm. then you are going to will based on a lie and you are, your very ability to act in a rational way is going to be compromised by your experience in your environment. But you are still responsible for the decisions that you make. And that's my point. I, I don't. I don't like. I just don't like excuses. I don't like blaming everybody. I. I, I yeah. I just think, wonder if. You, yeah. It I seems think. You're I not, think. I think that women. You, you just. I think you're. I think you're overcomplicating it a little bit. No. I, from I my think. Point I, of view. I think I am articulating what you said, mm -hmm. which was true actually. Mm -hmm. But then you reached a non sequitur conclusion, mm -hmm. which is you said actually, yeah, our environment does kind of. I didn't say it to doesn't. Do I don't say it choices. doesn't play an effect. I'm yeah. saying that you're responsible for the choices you make. And Ultimately, that's that, that's, necessarily that, that's true. yeah, that's my point. And so, when you're constantly blaming everybody else for the decisions that you make, and I see that a lot with women, I see it's the government's fault, it's your school system's fault. Even though, I mean, really, the school system's run by women. <laughs> yeah, well, the teachers country, teachers yeah. are, are mostly women. Yeah, I mean, I get sure. Ultimately, and, the country. Yeah, the media. A, the media. Women, women make eighty. Women. Women make eighty percent of consumer buying decisions. So the media is catering to women. Yeah, sure. I'm not denying any of. Yeah. I'm not, not okay. really denying any of these things. I just, I'm confused because you, we seem to have arrived at this. You seem to be contradicting yourself, but you've. We've, where where am I contradicting? By uh, acknowledging that. Uh, the ways that we get knowledge will affect the way that we can exercise our free will. But then saying that the ways that we get knowledge, which are by definition environmental, mm -hmm. uh, don't actually uh, uh, affect our. our but you can exercise also get free. knowledge through life experience and like watching people that are right, older. But you don't than experience you. life alone. You, you experience life in community, which is my point. Yeah. Well, my my point. I, I'm not trying to overcomplicate this. Is just that women are. Responsible. I think we're undercomplicating it, unfortunately. Well, which I, is why you've reached an erroneous conclusion. No, I, I think that women were responsible for the choices that we make, and you, I'm just not really that. into. I'm really not into. I just. I'm just not into. Yeah. Go ahead. I see where you're trying to get at. Is to say, regardless of how they got there, if it's sin, is a sin. If it's still sin, regardless of if the culture tells you it's okay to do. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's still sin. You still have to answer for the consequences. So what? Yeah. So what our friend Glenn has mentioned here, off yeah, camera, yeah. is he, he made the point, uh, an apt point for this discussion, mm -hmm. which is that a sin is a sin, whether you know you want to do it or not. But that actually is not the traditional teaching of the church. There are mm -hmm. certain Protestant denominations that say that that's true, but the the traditional teaching of the church, still the teaching of mm -hmm. Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodoxy, is that there are uh, different types of sin. There is venial sin, yeah. and there is mortal sin. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference? The, the difference is that a mortal sin is committed with full knowledge and with your consent. So uh, the Do reason- Do women not know they're getting rid of the dads in the home? I think women are fed a bunch of lies by our modern liberal feminist culture. And it doesn't, it doesn't obviate that the fact that what they're doing it. is often sinful, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it does create an important distinction. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I, don't, I, I really don't mean to be pedantic on this point, but this is like the fundamental distinction between mm -hmm. a liberal- uh, individualist worldview and a more conservative traditional mm -hmm. world, classical worldview is what free will is. And the liberals on the left and the right believe that freedom is the ability to do whatever you want whenever you want to do it. And the conservatives believe that freedom is doing what so, you ought to do. So what, what sin are women not responsible for? What do you mean? Like what, I, I'm just, I'm confused at your point. Like what sin are women not responsible for? I'm saying for? there's a, I'm, I'm saying that so are you saying they're venial sins? Uh, I'm saying that there is a distinction between venial and mortal sin. And okay. I'm, I'm suggesting that knowledge and, and c consent to sin right. are, are uh, integral I'm parts. Just, I'm just trying to apply what you're saying to the analogy. So if women are, are choosing to get STDs, abortions, be single mothers, yeah, yeah. alienate children I'm saying, from their I'm saying dads, that when, when you know, I'm saying, I'll what, tell you which, exactly what, what Where in this, no, exactly this process are, are they... When women sort of responsible. When women have not. been raised, when women have been raised their whole lives, mm -hmm. probably maybe by divorced parents, uh, raised their whole lives to be told to pursue a career rather than family, to go on the birth control pill at age mm -hmm. 12, to go to college and study some stupid nonsense and get a $200,000 student loan as a result of that. That, uh, that there's no such thing as right and wrong. There's no such thing as virtue. You just gotta go get your bag and maybe you're gonna end up on OnlyFans because you can make more money doing that and you can't wait for sing. When they're told that for their entire lives, it's not that they don't bear any moral responsibility, mm -hmm. but it is greatly reduced compared to someone who has proper knowledge and the exercise of their will. 
Oh, see, I've been on the other side of this. Mm -mm. What's the other side? No, the other side is, it doesn't matter. (laughs) No, because again, it's like you tell women these things, younger women, but women are going to do what they want to do I guess I'm just confused because previously you said that it's all different now because of the social conditions have changed. But now you're saying it doesn't matter. No, no, I'm saying there's more freedom. I'm saying there's more freedom for women to do what they want to do. And I think I think that when you have the most the freedom, freedom. Yeah. I, th- I think when you have the most choice, you see what people truly want to do. Not what they say they want to do, but what they what they choose to do. And how how do people come to their desires? Is the point. I know we're gonna go back to Google, huh? N- no. So, so it, I just I'm trying to part understand. of it part of it is through habits. So you know, if you I, get if you get a guy mm-hmm. who is a, a hunter Biden. You get a guy who's like a drug addict, (laughs) derelict, right? And you put him in a room with a bunch of uh, hookers and blow and a cello. And you say, you can do whatever you want. You can go play Bach on the cello, or you can go hang out with the hookers and the blow. Hunter Biden or a guy like him, probably not going to pick the cello. Mm -hmm. But if you go to a guy who's uh, relatively upright and who, uh, you know, has cultivated virtue and and believes that actually, you know, if he Mm -hmm. commits a lot of sins, he's going to just burn in hell for eternity and he, you know, loves God and everything. And you put him in the room with the hookers and the blow and the cello. I'm not saying a hundred times out of a hundred he's going to pick the cello, but a lot of times that guy's going to pick the cello. And so those two guys have the same choice available to them, but their wills are inclined toward different things. But you're still responsible for your sin. Yes. Okay, that's it. Yeah. That's what I don't, I just, I'm not really in, the, I just don't, I don't think coddling women helps us. I don't think, I don't, I don't think, I don't think addressing think, social reality. I don't, no, I, I, I think it's just a bunch of excuses. <laughs> I think as a woman, I know women in the same environments that picked completely different things. So that, that's my opinion. What, you can disagree, but you, I, I know yeah, women, right. People are I know different. women, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know women that, you know, they're in the same family. One, one shows sex work or something similar. One chose to be a housewife, same family. Right, but but if so, you're if you're saying, like so, to, to, the, to the point you opened with, when yeah. you say, look, it's different for the younger than thirty women or whatever, it's totally because the social circumstances have changed. I agree with you, but then the thing that has changed mm-hmm. is not the women and the the nature of the women. The thing that has changed is the social circumstances, and so the the place you're placing the blame. Even you, as you describe it, is in those changing laws and customs and norms, not on the nature of women. No, no, I still think you're responsible, but I don't think the laws are fair to men. So you would, and and you would change the laws, but you don't blame the laws for the problem, but you would change them anyway because they're so bad. You know, if I I can legally kill someone, should I? It depends the circumstance. (laughs) But in general. What's in general? I mean, if he's like threatening your family, perhaps. If he's just, you don't like the cut of his jib, probably Yeah, not. but you know what I'm asking, okay? I don't know what you're asking. I, Pearl, I promise <laughs> no, you, no, I do not know no, what you're asking. No, but that's, that's what I'm saying is, like, just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. It depends what, well, I don't, I don't, what the thing is. Look, what, what's your, I'm really just confused at what your, your point is. So are women responsible for their sin or they're not responsible? I think culpability for sin is contingent on knowledge and uh, free consent, okay. uh, which are... Uh, depend upon, to a large degree, uh, how one is educated. And the question of education is very important here because Mm -hmm. the begetting and education of children is the primary purpose of marriage, which is a natural institution. And so it seems to me that the idea that you are furthering and advocating, which cuts against the practice of marriage today, uh, unravels all of these things. It doesn't cut against the practice of marriage. I advocate that the laws should change. Right, and until the laws change, Men have to decide for themselves. I think you're skirting the issue. I, I think that men are tired of being told what to do by women. So I think every man has to decide. Do you, do you, not disagree, do you disagree that every man should decide for himself what makes sense in his life? I do. I think men ought to do what's right. Okay. And you know what's right. I hope I do. I hope I've cultivated my faculties of reason and moral conscience to such a degree that uh, they can uh, correspond with God's grace and basically lead me right. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it almost sounds like you're playing God. No, but I hope that I'm cooperating with God. Okay. And I'm a rational creature made in the image and likeness of God. Okay. And, and that, that fact is borne out in my reason, which is what we're supposedly here okay. to do. And the fact, Pearl, that you mm-hmm. keep uh, backing away from using our reason to come to certain judgments about how men ought to behave and about good and bad and right and wrong mm-hmm. seems to me 
a, a denial of, the, of what is basically the premise of any conversation, mm-hmm. which is that we can know something about reality and come to conclusions about it. And I think you do come to those conclusions, but, I, but then you evade the responsibility for it that, by saying, I, I just that, tell men to do what no, they No, I think that facts don't care about your religion. So I, I think facts is, don't care about the way you feel about them. What do you I think, think a fact I think, is? I think that, <laughs> what do you think a fact is? That women are paid to leave marriages. That's just a fact. Oh, oh, I thought yeah, you were yeah, facts. Yeah, 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 and so, you know, okay. I mean, that, that's, just, that's just a fact. And the way you feel about it doesn't change the way it is. Actually, the way that I feel, mm-hmm. which I hoped, I like to think I've arrived at that through reason, so I think it's tethered to something, you know, okay. real, uh, does affect the way that I behave. And the way that I behave does, to some degree, affect the social circumstances in which we all live. Mm-hmm. So in a way, actually, uh, you know, a friend of mine says facts don't care about your feelings. But politics largely cares about your feelings, and your mm-hmm. feelings are cultivated through virtuous and vicious habits. Mm-hmm. And being selfish and sleeping around and not getting married and I not having say, kids I don't is say vicious. Men, I don't say and men getting men married is very around. virtuous. I don't say that men should sleep around. But you say they shouldn't get married if you were to give advice, which you don't. I say that men should be extremely cautious when getting married. I say they should vet women heavily and if there are not enough wives, that might not be the way that they end up going. So what should they do then? It's so interesting. You got, it's always ba- it always goes back to that, like me telling them what to do. Every guy's got to decide for himself. Uh, in Pearl World, which we were, we were living oh, in, in Pearl, Pearl World, World earlier, then what, what would men do if they begged you for advice? <laughs> I would say go, go talk to... Go talk to a preacher, <laughs> your pastor, a preacher. <laughs> I thought facts don't care about your religion. <sighs> or, or your father. Or, look, I just don't, again, I'm not in the business of telling men what to do. And that's You've just not, that. you know. But I think you kind of are. Not I think really. I think not really. I, I just don't think. Do you have any? Because it, it depends on the guy. My, like, how do you know? Because you'd first ask like, what their situation is. Every person has a different situation. But every every man we're talking about is a man, and there are some things that are common to men, mm-hmm. like human nature. Mm-hmm. And marriage, being a natural institution, is something that is common to men throughout all of history. But it's not. It's world. not the way we do it today. Some of us. Marriage do. today is not marriage anymore. It's not. It's not marriage when. I think. I think it's mine not. Is. It's not marriage today. Is not marriage anymore. What do you mean by that? When the average marriage is seven to eight years, oh. when ninety, um, when yeah. women leave seventy to eighty percent of the time, um, when women can file abuse or can accuse you of abuse on the way out the door, when women can put you on child support, when women can put you on yeah, element, there, there are many it is not marriage, marriage I totally anymore. Agree. I totally agree. And, and that we're confused about marriage. It, I totally. And agree. so, again, you know, you're, you're. I have a hard time telling men to sign up for an institution almost blindly I don't think blind. with, I think they should with, do with the consequences that come with it. Don't you think And women... I've, I've seen men on the other side of it. Men are nine times more likely to commit suicide after divorce. Yeah, divorce they're, is awful. They're, they're, and it, it ruins men's lives every yeah. day. But we don't, dis- that's and not something we disagree on. It, but what I, it, sometimes it sounds like you guys downplay it. By how no, I don't think so. I just think we, you know, you're you're denying that you're advising men to do anything, even though you're saying it would be a good strategy. To no, I, I don't. I don't tell men what to do. One man might find that Christian sure. virgin chick sure. in the middle of nowhere that goes to Latin mass. One man might not find one close to him at all. One, and, and even I, I've even I know someone that runs a matchmaking service for like Latin mass. Great. It's going no. They're having the same problems. Hmm. <laughs> and this is for the Latin community. I know yeah. someone that runs one. He tells me the same thing. There's too many men. There's not enough women in, in this specific one. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and the women are a bit too high of standards, a, a bit delusional a great, what they have. Have, have you ever so, been to the, so the it's, female it's like, calculator? Yeah, yeah, but my point is, so you, you're going into the churches. You're finding the same problems outside of the churches. Maybe some of them are a little slower. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are a little slower to hit, right? Like, Latin Mass, I would say, is one of the better ones, yeah. but there's still a record number of annulments. We still see more liberal Again, not, not among the trads, but, but in the Catholic Church broadly, the annulments have gone up. Cor- correct. And so my point is, 
you know, it's going to be tough to convince men to join these things when even the churches seem to be going left. Yeah, I agree. But, and uh, the but, churches are, are teaching egalitarianism. Like th- this some is, are. You know, I, I go to, I went to, and I know a lot of these are anecdotes, yeah. but I just, when you start to interview as many people as I have, you start to see patterns. And, you know, I, I'm hearing from men that the church makes their wives worse, not better, hmm. because they're being told in Bible, like, they're being told in in you know, their, their Bible studies that they're women led, you know, yeah, yeah. and they Heretics get all these. Heretics and schismatics have created problems for all of history. Yeah, yeah, history. yeah. But, but I, I don't think this, the church is a fail safe in a society that pays women to lead. Yeah, no, there's risk and, in and, everything. But, but to your, to your point, Pearl, you, you've said that, uh, look, you're not pres- prescribing anything. You're just observing how things are and the men don't want to get married. And uh, mm-hmm. Right. I guess what I'm observing is that mm-hmm. Men still like women, even with all the kind of weird rainbow stuff. Yeah. Men still like women. They do. Women still like men. And they're still going to get together and they're still going to desire children or at the very least they're going to do the things that lead to children. And so uh, that's going to happen whether you advise them to do that or advise them not to do that or whatever. And, and uh, so in, in that case, don't we need to deal with what that institution ought to look like so rather fi- than say sit on your hands until we change No, I say fix the institution. That should be the number one thing because men are not going to return to ma- people are not going to return to marriage until you make the institution more fair. Well, what they'll doesn't do is matter, they'll return. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what I say. You guys have been preaching marriage for a decade, yep. and the rates of marriage have still been going down. Why? Because the cost is too high and the quality of women is too low. How do you fix it? Right. Well, they just increase the quality of the women. You yeah. say stop being fat. <laughs> that's the number one. <laughs> don't don't go on OnlyFans. It might be on the list. Don't, I don't know if it's number one. I mean, I for know. men, that's like the number one thing. I, I wouldn't say it's in, okay. I'm, well, I'm blessed with a okay. thin wife. Not now because she has a child in her. But. Okay, but but you, you understand what I'm saying. Yep. And until you you lower the risk for men, the the yeah. utopia you're asking for isn't it's, going it's to not return. A utopia. I'm describing no, no, the human no, but condition the, for all like, of history. Okay, but but what you're asking for, the families will not return. And so I'm almost like trying to to plead with the trad cons. Yeah, like yeah. like <laughs> you, you are not going to get anywhere shaming men for not getting married. The only where, way that you were going to yeah, see progress is, is by making the institution more fair for men and giving fathers access to their children. But when you say make the institution more fair for men, you're saying make divorce a little nicer for men. I I, I think divorce well, is the problem. No, <laughs> I not the I, solution. I agree, I agree with you. I, I don't believe, like I don't, I don't, I, I don't believe in divorce, okay? So if we could ban divorce tomorrow, great. But I think I think for the time being, so if we, we could do that, yeah. you know, let, let's go. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right. <laughs> but but for the time being, it's like, okay, at least, you know, the the there should be mandatory DNA testing at birth. No. I don't know why you, okay. Because I, it, it's pr- calling my wife a whore to do that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Why? why? Okay. So because women, the, the assumption of the, man, of the, first of all, mandatory, good grief. But the, the uh, premise of it is that my wife is sleeping around. Okay. So, so I'm the, quite confident the my woman, wife is not sleeping the woman, around. The woman feels icky for a little bit, but then. The man you know, feels but, icky. But, I would but, feel but, quite icky. Wait, wait. The woman feels icky for a little bit. Fine. Maybe the man feels icky. Certainly he would. You're but, calling his but, wife a whore and him a cuckold. Prevents, yeah. It prevents men from being put on child support and raising kids that aren't theirs. You're saying they're And married. if people want to opt out of it, fine. Fine, you can opt okay. out. You so it's not whatever. mandatory. But it's, a, it's voluntary. But there it is voluntary. Uh, I, 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 I think it would be better if it was mandatory. I think that's a better... So then the men can opt out. Oh my gosh. What are you... Are, I'm just trying to figure out what no, you're saying. I, okay, I would say mandatory DNA testing at birth. That, that I think would be better. <laughs> But even but though the I'm, men don't want it, look it look so it. you're telling a man now. You're contradicting what a man has to say because you haven't been in that situation. Do you I, know what a I've man, been in, in but birthing it's so funny. rooms? Why do you guys? Times. Why do you guys make light of like situations that? Pearl, I, like, I have been in the situation and you have not. I've been in the birthing room twice. No, I'm you, talking. No, I'm no. I'm talking about about a man raising a child that's not his. Oh yeah, it's not an uncommon thing. At least one of my kids looks like me. <laughs> the other one looks a lot like my. No, wife. no, but okay, but we're trying to make jokes. But this stuff is serious, Michael. Yeah, like this of. is serious. Like uh, I guess, I guess but, uh, the the implication, so, so, the implication though is that uh, you know in two percent or whatever you know where the woman has slept, uh, cheated mm-hmm. or something, and again you know we're bringing in lots and, of different demographics and so, so circumstances here. But in that case, that what then the parents get divorced? I thought you just said we're going to ban divorce. No, no, no. Um, 
Well, okay, if she's committing fraud, then yeah. <laughs> she's committing adultery. <laughs> but you think adultery is grounds for divorce? I thought you said we're going to ban divorce. This is what I mean by the liberal kind of things creeping okay, into your, I'll, your I'll give Okay, I'll give a couple exceptions, you know, but... Hmm. I personally, I don't know if banning divorce... I think you're trying to railroad me off of the real issues. I'm here. not. I'm trying to no, figure out what you're but, but I want, articulating, and you're contradicting yourself. I'm not. I'm not contradicting myself. You just did. You said we'll have mandatory okay, fine, testing. Fine, we want fine. a mandatory. Because we'll ban divorce. To, we won't ban divorce. To, I was trying to. I was trying to compromise here. Because okay. I, I, you said you felt icky. I said, fine, Michael Knowles will get the note. I get the exception. Yeah, you'll, you can okay. be the exception. All right, well, that's good. I'm happy to be an exception. <laughs> but but my, my whole point is that, you know, th this stuff is serious, Michael. And you are not going to see marriage return until you start enacting policies that protect men from the institution of marriage as it is today. Oh, sure. Yeah, but we don't disagree on that. Right? Then, what, then what's, the, what's the argument for? What marriage is, why it's still good to do. Uh, it, no matter what the policies are, why man is inclined toward it. No, any policy? Yeah, I think marriage so, is so always good. <laughs> any, any policy? Yeah, I think any country in the world at any time in history, it's basically good to get married. So, so a guy, <laughs> so if they make a policy that, I'm trying to think of something crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, even the policies that are today, it's like, you know, that if, so really, any policy, wait, what, what? You say that you have a son, so your son got married, and his wife got pregnant, and come to find out, five years later, he's not the biological father. He's been living this life for the last five years. You're saying that you would advise your son to stay married to him. So the question for, mm -hmm. because I have a microphone on, was if my son uh, were married, and his wife cheated on him and had a kid by another man, would I support uh, my son yeah. divorcing? Uh, I do not support divorce <laughs> under any circumstances. So, uh, yeah, I think what... Yeah, I, Matthew 19 and um, 1 Corinthians 7, where he says, you know, this is the hardness of your heart. You allow to divorce your wife under the pretense of sexual immorality. He doesn't say that. But the, So the question that was brought up from uh, off-camera was uh, what about the so-called acceptive clause in mm -hmm. the Gospel of St. Matthew, where our Lord says, what God has joined, let no man separate, uh, except for the case of porneia. Mm -hmm. And what's curious about this um, so-called acceptive clause, which in, in recent centuries, some Protestants have interpreted to mean that if your wife cheats on you, you can mm -hmm. uh, divorce her, but which had, had not been understood that way for the vast majority of the history of the church, and certainly mm -hmm. and still is the case in the Catholic Church and, and uh, elsewhere. Um, I guess one way to understand that and that apparent contradiction with the other synoptic gospels, which do not have the so-called acceptive mm -hmm. clause, is to remember that St. Matthew is writing for a Jewish audience. And there was a, a um, live debate at the time over, uh, over the exception, what, what, what type of adulterous exception that would imply. And so one way of, of understanding Matthew chapter 19 and the acceptive clause is to say, actually what he's saying is let's ignore this whole sort of... Um, debate that's taking place between various Jewish groups and just get to the heart of the matter. Um, but uh, f furthermore, the fact that you see it in the other Gospels, uh, mm. not repeated with the acceptive clause, would seem to uh, bolster the traditional view of the church, understood in the magisterium and the divisive faith, and articulated by the victor of Christ on earth, that uh, no, you don't get to, to divorce just because you cheat on your wife. Also because it just at a natural level, that would create a perverse incentive such that if two people don't like each other, uh, there's an incentive well, to just go out and cheat so, and then you can dissolve the marriage. Okay, so if she... If he's raising a kid that's not his, you you would support them staying together. I oppose divorce in all oh, wow. circumstances. Yeah. Wow. That's okay. a conservative view, not a liberal view. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe I'm liberal in that one. Yeah. So. No, I yeah. think you're liberal in a lot of ways, and mm -hmm. I think the red pill is liberal in a lot of ways, yeah, which well, is the which is why they're um, ironically just, just the flip side of the feminist. Well, I, I disagree with that because again, you you guys are the ones pushing men into a feminist institution, which marriage today when is. Did, Again, and, and again, and again, you're not going to see marriage return. Well, marriage has been around uh, long before Mary Wollstonecraft and feminism. Okay. It's a universal uh, institution that has been around as long as human beings have been around. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little silly to call it a feminist institution. Well, the way it's run today is. I think the way it's run today, the way it's run today, it's seven to eight years. 
<laughs> and, and the man doesn't get access. I know, but no one's talking about you. Well, I'm talking about me. <laughs> but that, that's the point. We're just you talking don't... about me and you, Pearl. <laughs> you know, we're the, we're yeah. the, society is just me and you and everybody else. Right, but, but that's the whole point. And, and I just, you know, we, we could deal with shoulds, the way the world should be. And I'm saying the way it is I'm not, now. I'm, I'm and I'm saying, I'm saying the way it is now, marriage will not return until you start lowering the risk for men. I, I suppose the distinction here is you're painting my view as mm-hmm. being some sort of utopian prescription. Mm-hmm. But to the contrary, I am describing the way that the world is and has been. Marriage is a natural fact. It is. It has been a natural fact for all of human history mm-hmm. everywhere in the world. And so it seems to me quite the opposite, that what you are prescribing for men, though you won't take responsibility for advising it, is that men avoid this natural institution, that no matter how much you advise them against it, they're not going to avoid it. Don't, I don't advise men to, like, why do you keep putting words in my mouth? That's not what I said. I think it is. <laughs> okay, it's not. Every every guy should decide for himself. That's that's what I say. But that's a different, to say, um, whiskey is okay, tasty, you, and every man should decide if what he do wants you, to have whiskey. What do you think the solution is moving forward? For men. For men. Mm-hmm. I think at the political level, it would be to reform the divorce laws. How? And re- uh, to ban no-fault divorce. Okay. To uh, disincentivize divorce as a, a financial and political matter. Okay. Uh, to uh, eradicate feminism from uh, public life entirely, the whole preposterous ideology at every okay. single level. To uh, uh, over rule the Obergefell decision, which preposterously redefined marriage and took sexual complementarity out of it, which is absurd, Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, once you did that, there's more to do, but once you accomplish that at the political level, you Mm -hmm. would go a long way toward fixing the problem. Then I would encourage a return of traditional religion in public life because uh, not only is uh, society not secular, but it never can be because all human conflict ultimately is theological mm-hmm. and everybody's got to serve somebody. So either we're going to worship the God who's like really God or we're going to worship the God of money or the God of uh, casual sex or the okay. God of individualism as the liberals uh, want us to do. Okay. And, and I think as, as a lot of the red pill wants us to do. Uh, so I would, I would restore traditional religion in public life and the religion that built our country and our mm-hmm. civilization. And then at the individual level, I would, having now, I've now restored families, which is I'm pleased to say. <laughs> wow, good uh, job. I, w- I would recommend that uh, individuals um, behave in accordance with right reason and virtue. So uh, you, you've already gotten rid of the liberalism and the feminism. You've gotten rid of the subjectivism mm-hmm. and the kind of language you use, which is just do whatever you want, man. I don't think people ought to do whatever they want. I think they ought yeah. to do what is right, and that will cultivate their desires, their very desires to incline them imperfectly because it's a fallen world, mm-hmm. but largely toward things that are good and conducive to their flourishing, which is how we lived okay. until relatively so recently. So I don't, I don't disagree with any of that. Yeah. My question is, what should men do in the meantime? Uh, They ought to, well, be politically involved. I don't advocate an individual political quietism. They ought to be politically involved and elect good candidates and things like that. Uh, They ought to, uh, at a practical level, go to church, work hard, put away the porn, don't do like drugs, uh, do things you ought to do, date in a way that is uh, virtuous. Uh, and then uh, get married and have children and be fruitful and multiply because mm-hmm. if we can't out-argue the liberals, we might at least outbreed them. And what do they do if women don't want to get on their program? Uh, Pearl, I guess you have a, a dimmer view of men than I do. I think, okay. m- I think men can be very persuasive, and I think that men can lead women uh, in bad ways and in good ways. Okay. And so I would recommend that men take a leadership role as we once had in the family and in society. Can, can men lead women that don't want to follow? Yeah. Okay, I disagree. I don't think men can lead a woman that doesn't want to follow them. Uh, I, think, I think that's a recipe for disaster. I think that will and desire are shaped by all sorts of things, including the persuasion of good men. Okay. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you can lead a woman that doesn't want to follow you. So I, I think that's a recipe for disaster, personally. Hmm. But I, I, I think until, again, until the quality of the wives go up and the risk goes down, How's the quality going to go up? I told you step one, the treadmill. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing guys look at, right? Treadmill? Anything else? <laughs> no, not being fat. <laughs> and 
So what yeah. else? Um, I mean, I think women, it's better if we save our virginities for marriage. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, better, for sure. I would say not accusing your husband of abuse, taking the kids and getting fat after you get the ring. Yeah, that's true. But they've already gotten married at that. I thought we were trying to figure out how they even. Got oh, married. yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But that, w- that would be good. Too. I agree. Yes. That you shouldn't. You shouldn't yeah. Agree. It's untrue. Yeah. Um, and I think advocating for divorce reform would be a good step. So. I totally agree. And I, I really like that last point because it acknowledges that uh, our behavior is conditioned by our circumstances. No, I, I, think, I think you're responsible for your behavior. Then why would, we cha- why would we change the divorce laws? So you can stop paying women to leave. I guess we're maybe- I thought I thought we were trying to figure out how to get women to get married. That was that was what we were right. Well So yeah, why, but cha- why you- would changing the divorce laws affect that? Well, it would change the incentive structure. But I still think you're, it's like, okay, yeah. you could be paid to do something wrong, but you're still responsible if you do it. Sure. But okay. you're more inclined to do it if the temptation fine, is strong fine. enough and if your uh, moral fiber is weaker. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I agree with that. So we we sort of agree. I think. I think we broadly agree. Yeah. The, the only place in which we really disagree, I think, is that, as as you've admitted, you would you adopt a little bit more of a liberal worldview. Wh- whether that's because you say, well, it's just the way things are, man, or because you you know exalt the individual and and the free choice, you know, just choose to do whatever I, you want. I would I say know. I describe the world as it is, where you describe it world. how you would like it to be. And I would and say I would say I ideal in. Is yeah. and you, I would say, deal in ought. But I, but I think oughts to d- derive from is because I think that nature has an end. Uh, so I, I would say I am describing the world as it is. Obviously, it's my opinion. Yeah. And I think you're describing a liberal, uh, utopian, tr- tr- literally utopian view. Of the How world. is it a liberal utopia to say that men should have access to their children? Because it it creates an idol out of the individual will and autonomy. Which is how something. by saying that men because you're saying men have... ought to do whatever they want, and I'm saying this by should, by should saying right. by saying men should be cautious. No, well, I'm I, I'm I'm referring to a different statement of yours, which okay. is men ought to choose whatever they want to do. By follow, but I always say by following God and their purpose. Right, and I'm saying their purpose can be known uh, through reason, and God God's existence can be known through reason, and uh, uh, obviously then to cooperate with God, right. there's revelation. But we but we've also agreed that. Some people are called to say priesthood, so yeah. that's not in. But we're not talking about priests, are we? Some men are called the celibacy. All of the apostles weren't married, right? The the, the majority, the, fir- the first yeah. priests, yeah, some were, but yeah. the first priests uh, acting in persona Christi in the person mm-hmm. of Christ, who's the bridegroom of the church, mm-hmm. have a special charism of celibacy. Right. Well, but you right, and I are—we're not but, really talking about priests, are we? We're talking about well, lay I'm, men who just don't want to get married. Okay. Well. I think that every guy has to decide for himself. Right, that and that's what from, I'm saying. Is and that. that comes from either God or your purpose as a man. And, and, your, and your purpose as a man is? Different for every man. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's the liberal part. It's yeah. kind of you do you, choose your own. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, like you're a, you're a political commentator. You know, that's going to be different than Cigar what salesman. other. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be different than what other guys want to do. Or, sure, you know. but I'm a I'm a guy who uh, works my job, mm-hmm. is married, has kids, in as much as I'm blessed to have kids, uh, respects my elders, uh, has a patriotic loyalty to my country, mm-hmm. and gives God, I hope, even some modicum of the of the worship that is due to Him on this earth, so I can enjoy Him forever. That's, I am. That's great. I and I hope that good job. I, I hope that I'm doing it even in any way that's yeah. satisfactory, but. That's not just from my personal preference mm-hmm. or my subjective sense of, you know, what my purpose is, man. That is prescribed, and it's something that I've arrived at, right. as many other men have arrived at that exact same answer, through reason that mm-hmm. I take uh, as, uh, also as a matter of authority. Mm-hmm. That's very different from, hey, man, every guy should just decide for himself. I'm not going to tell him. But that's not, I say it comes else. from God or their purpose. Okay, so is it better to get married or better not to get married? Depends on the guy, you know, for the... <laughs> There you go. For for because some men are called to celibacy, some men are called to putting priesthood. the priests aside for a second. What about the guys who are not going to be priests? It some men don't have the option to get married, Michael. I'm just saying, sh- should it, they? It, Would it be good for them to do it? If I don't can? deal in shoulds, I deal with what is. 
I, yeah. Well, th- you do deal with shoulds in some ways, right? Mm-hmm. You do you do say some things are better than other things, but on this question, you're not you're not willing to do it, which is why I say that the the red pill, though it acknowledges many problems in the world, mm-hmm. that the red pill uh, diagnoses a lot of problems, mm-hmm. the red pill ultimately fails in its prescriptions. Uh, mm-hmm. And is ultimately kind of the flip side of feminism because well, it adopts the, the basically liberal. The, it's world. tough because the prescriptions kind of. I, I don't really do that. There's different content creators that prescribe different things. Some I think things, you prescribe a little. Some bit. some things I agree with. I I, I will, I'll give one prescription actually. Okay. I'll give one, just All right. one. All right. <laughs> if you get married, get a prenup. <laughs> no, you can't get a prenup because it invalidates the sacrament. Really? Yeah, a, a marriage is fully giving of yourself to the other person. No strings attached. You don't prenups even believe in prenups? Certainly not. The nearest I would come to a prenup would be, uh, I call it the Michael Knowles prenup, which is, and I, it's all, I'm sort of cheekily suggesting it because I really uh, object to prenups in all I circumstances. Just, huh. But the Knowles prenup would be uh, whoever, whoever initiates the divorce mm-hmm. forfeits everything. Okay. That's the nearest that I would come to a prenup. Okay. Okay, so you kind of, but in 2024, no, you I, still wouldn't, you wouldn't advise a guy gets 30, a 24, 40, 24, wow. 10, 24. I, Sorry, I'm just shocked. Like you hear the stories I'm telling you. You yeah. know the state of marriage I'm articulating today. The, the Catholic view. You, you, sta- you know the state of women today and men mm-hmm. still can't get prenups. Right. To protect themselves. Right. Because marriage in its nature, as you said, is a lifelong union of a man and a woman for the sake of begetting and educating children and for the right. mutual support of the but, spouses. But if, so if you, if you begin that institution by saying this might not be a lifelong union, you have you have fundamentally undermined the institution before you've even begun. Wow. That's crazy. Just the Catholic view. So, yeah, but if, if you don't get divorced, what does it matter if you don't do it? Yeah, you don't get divorced. And, and, and the thing is, <laughs> You're see, right. but see, but see, but that's, that's what I, I, that's what I, I think we're going back to you say what ought to be, and I say what is. Because even and even— You're also saying even, what ought to be, even, and I'm also even, saying no, what is. No, no, you're trying to— but, no. but Because even— not trying to even, do anything. Even in, this, even in this scenario, the Catholic Church, the divorce rate is 35%. It's not right. uncommon. Again, though, so— And so you're well, saying, you're, don't what, get in the car, don't put on a seatbelt. But the view that you're articulating is a kind of a liberal view, which is that, uh, you know, we know what the Catholic Church teaches by just what the individuals yeah. might say at any given moment. That's not how it works. <laughs> it works because there's a magisterium yeah, women, that's 2,000 years old that is articulated by a man who wears right, a funny but, hat. But women, okay. but women are not acting in accordance to the Catholic teachings. Yeah, many women don't. I'm just I telling mean, you what the Catholic view is. And right, I think right. I, 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 under, I, yeah. I understand, but I just, I think... Wow, I just didn't realize your views were that extreme on that. That's you mean that I believe what every Catholic believed until like five minutes ago. I, <laughs> I guess it is. Yeah, I just, I just, well, I just, I don't know how you would tell a guy that you love like not to protect himself in an institution where say, in in twenty twenty yeah. in twenty twenty four. Well, I mean, there's women that are good women at twenty two, and then at forty two, decide the man's an abusive monster. How'd they come to decide that? Um, usually a lot of times their friends get involved. Mm, a lot of times they friends. start looking at the wrong media or, they, get, watch or, media. They, or they just get spiteful and decide to gotta do it on their own. Gotta watch how that spite begins. I don't deny okay, that it happens, but, but these things develop over time mm-hmm. because of rot that can set into a marriage that, mm-hmm. a, that a, a husband needs to be vigilant about and a wife so, needs to be vigilant so about. So if a woman decides to leave, the husband is still responsible? The man is the head of the household and mm-hmm. bears the leadership responsibility, in my view. It's not in the liberal right, view or but, the feminist. But he can't but lead a chick Christian. that doesn't want to follow. The Christian would say, <laughs> yes, the man is the head of his household. Okay, yeah. But I, I wouldn't say that's like typical in most religious marriages. I, I've heard kind of the same problems in in the church and out of the church. So I, I wouldn't say that's the norm. Yeah, I don't know. You know, what is it? Five to 10% divorce rate among the traditionalists, and, uh, you know? Ten percent among I, the Orthodox Jews, and thirty percent among the Muslims. Thirty-four percent among the, the Catholics broadly. That includes people like Joe Biden. And then uh, that's still ten points lower than the no, national. No, no, but we just said the Catholic divorce rate's a third. That's why I said thirty-four percent. The national okay. divorce is forty-six percent. Okay. So. But that, but the Catholic but divorce still, rate includes still, people who don't still, practice that's the That's still faith. not. That's still not small. Yeah, because I thought I'm just saying it's significantly lower than the okay, national average by twenty-five yeah. percent. Yeah, that's just wow. Yeah, I think I think men should protect themselves. Oh, you're, you are shocked to discover that I'm a Catholic. You're no, shocked. I'm I'm shocked that you you don't think that men 
have a valid marriage if they want to protect themselves in any way. No, I yeah, I just view, I I, yeah. I hold to the Catholic view of the sacrament of matrimony. Okay, that's yeah. uh, shocking these days, I guess. Do you want to get married? I'm not proposing. Well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a, a big. I'm a, I'm a woman. You're a woman. Yeah. And therefore, obviously. you do want to get married. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously, there, there's not risk as much for women, but I don't care about getting married with the state. I don't care. I, I would sign a prenup. I don't care. Would you? What, if you do, don't get married I do want to with the married. state, what is that? You'd just do it in a church ceremony or something, mm-hmm. but not recognize. But the, yeah, the problem with the Catholic Church is a lot of times they won't do it unless it's recognized by the state. Yeah, um, which I, I I don't really understand. The reason is that marriage is a public act. Mm-hmm. Is the is the traditional view of it. So it's it's not you know modern people say oh it's yeah. just between me and my lover and we, well, and we God, don't need a sheet yeah. of paper so it's it's before God mm-hmm. but it's also before a minister of God and it's also before the community because marriage is both uh, you know a sacrament but also a natural yeah. institution so it, because it's the basic building block of society because it's political and that it's the, you know political just means more than one person uh, because it's the basic unit of politics it's public. Yeah, it's public. well, I just... That's why we can't get divorced willy-nilly, because yeah. you've made a well, vow we, to God and to the public. Well, you can nowadays. Yeah, right, but you should. <laughs> well, you should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I would never want to put a, a guy in a position where he's signing, like, a contract legally that's not fair to him. Hmm. I just think if I if I love someone, like, I wouldn't want to put him in that position. So, personally, why would I don't care. I don't... Because you you're, you're paid, I could. I know I wouldn't, but I just I think anything you can do nowadays to make a guy feel better about it with the risks today, I think is fine. So I, I don't really. Wouldn't I would, that increase the chance that he could divorce you? Not that anyone ever would. But. Yeah, but men divorce for like good reasons, where women divorce for the dumbest reasons. I don't think there's any. <laughs> no, there's no good reason, but they're more. It's like <laughs> abuse, infidelity, where women. It's like I wasn't happy anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so you know, um, no, because I, I think if you're a good wife nowadays, it, it, one, it's rare. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it is. you know, I, I think it's kind of the onus on me to make the marriage like. But isn't it, if so if the, you're not worried about him leaving you and he. I, yeah, I mean, then, if it then happens. Then shouldn't you just say, happens, I will never. If, if it happens, it's an L. But. It's a big L. You would, you'd be it's an L. an L. I wouldn't want sure. it. But wouldn't, wouldn't it be, when you're getting married to future Mr. Pearl, you know. Shouldn't you just say, hey, pal, I will never, under any circumstances, divorce you. So yeah. help me God. Well, Which is actually the value. Well, there's there's so many women that that say that, and they don't mean it. And then they do but something you do completely. I do mean it. But I, I think, you know, part of growing up is see, being able to see another point of view and another perspective. And just because I mean it, you know, it doesn't. I'm not offended that he would want to prenup or he would want to protect himself. You should be himself. offended by that. I, you should be. I don't think you should be. I, I think we should be trying, you know, I think you should try to make men like more comfortable with it because, you know. But I don't think giving men the, a greater option to divorce makes them more comfortable with marriage. I think it makes them less comfortable in marriage. Mm-hmm. I think the greater the opportunity to break it up, the worse it is for the institution. Yeah, but right now one party is rewarded where one's punished. Yeah. So one one party has a great opportunity to do it. Mm-hmm. And one party has much less of an opportunity. But I don't think that's ameliorated by in, by growing the opportunity of the other party, right? Wouldn't wouldn't the better one be to just say may I be struck down dead if I divorce you, pal, but we're in it together. Yeah, but you can say that, but it doesn't make it true. So I I just I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> your word is your bond, isn't it? I mean, that's what they say, but but yours is just because <laughs> just because I would not leave and I would not divorce. I understand how many women have said that before and done the opposite thing. And while you know it's not my fault, I, I think it's fair to make men feel more comfortable with it. So I just I don't I don't need the government to to. Why do I need the government? Because we to, live in society. But I don't think I need the government to confirm a something that's between me, him, and God, and but the it's community, and the, and the community and that I'm in. It's it's not, well, and the community. Yeah. But that's the politics. 
That's I, just another word. I, I just, I don't think the government really should be in marriage. I think that's something that should be in the church. What is the government? Um, I, I don't, what is the government? Yeah. You're talking about the government like it's some foreign thing. What is the government? We're just talking about the political. Well, I don't, I don't think the government should be the legal enforcement arm for children. What, what else operates the law than mm-hmm. the government? Mm-hmm. By definition, the government is what operates the law and, and passes well, the law. And for me it. personally, Michael, I, I would be okay with a prenup. I, I, don't, I would not be offended. I would not be offended by a DNA test. I, would, I think that's fine. So. All right. Well, you're, uh, listen, I hope you find a good man who, based on that. But I think you'll find a better man if you say, I won't, find a, I won't sign a prenup. I think I'll find a dumber man, but... <laughs> Because <laughs> that is that is dumb. <laughs> Let me know in ten years if the marriage rates go up with this strategy. Well, look, uh, they won't go up if people keep being big libs. But that's why that's why I'm a little concerned that mm-hmm. that even people who who rightly diagnose the problems with marriage mm-hmm. are uh, coming up with solutions that will not help in the end. Well, Namely, men being selfish. I think. I think that's kind of a mischaracterization of the way I would put it. I don't think protecting yourself is selfish. Um, Or men, you know, sort of walking away, as you put it earlier. I I did not say that every guy should do that, so I don't know why you keep trying to say I said that. You suggested it would be a good strategy. No, I said that. I said that. I. I said that some men will. So. No, you literally said it's a good strategy to do that. And I didn't say they should do it. So I don't, I don't know what we're... So the, the phrase, it is a good strategy too, and one should, are semantically identical. Okay. They mean exactly okay. the same thing. Okay, it, it is an option. It is an option. Okay. But that's not, we all agree it's okay. an option. We're just asking what's best it's, to do. It, no, I, I don't, again, I don't try to say what's... But you accidentally did. That's, I, I try not to say what's best. I, why, again, why I, I try to. Why not? Because, You're a smart girl, because, Pearl. Why don't because, you tell us what you think? Well, because, again, I, I think it's about what is and what the reality of the world is. And, and I, you know, I, again, until you lower the risk for men and raise the reward, you're not going to see traditionalism return in any capacity. So. Okay. Well, we'll see. Because I guess my, my, uh, way that I would impel people to engage in more traditional and mm-hmm. I think uh, lifestyles that are more conducive to their flourishing is just to tell them to do it and encourage them to do it. And when they do the thing, when they, when they do the rational activity in accordance with virtue, that will lead to their happiness. Uh, so I think sort of by definition mm-hmm. that, that will uh, help. But uh, I guess the other thing we could do is disengage, sit on our hands and no, Watch I think I think I think we could come together and you know make the laws more fair for men. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that would be the solution that we would agree on. It's part of it. Okay. But don't sit on That's your hands for the one. rest of the time. That's number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And in the meantime, people will make their own decisions. Okay. Pearl, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for Pleasure having me. Pleasure to chat with you. <laughs>